Oh, you're late again. Oh, you're late again. [laughs] [laughs] Yeah. [laughs] [noise] Oh, three whites, oh, 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 oh. Ooh, ah. Oh. I like it black an- black and white but Make makin' moves [inaudible 1:19:02.07] I'm telling you I'm gonna go here, man. [noise] I'm not afraid of no smoke. [laughs] Yeah, no smoke. Whoa, veggie tray [laughs] Very nice. [noise] I expect that amount of space. [laughs] Hmm, I wonder what they had, well, they had steak. Well, we wanna check it out before we come in. [noise] Wanna check the steaks? Maybe they have steak. No, they didn't have steak. Oh damn. [noise] Damn. I'm irritated. [laughs] [laughs] No, they had uh they had, I think they had like, they had like a pretty good set of steaks, right? [noise] Like the s- the sizzling one. The pretty good one. They probably got the cold one. [noise] Mhm. [noise] Thank you. [noise] Yeah, they probably ate it all. [laughs] Yeah. [noise] [laughs] Mhm. [noise] Mmm. [noise] [laughs] [noise] I'm just gonna steal off I don't know where this goes. K, um, I need a plate to put these. Uh Plate? Here. Sorry. Looking for some Get that big ol' plate for everyone. Whatever. I'm just throwing these together now. Cuz I can't flip this and I can't carry it. Um So yeah, yeah, oh no. And it's probably not gonna, someone's gonna have to get that big ol' plate. Yeah, it's not gonna fit anywhere. Here, what'll we do? Oh crap. And it's not gonna fit in that one, either. No. [noise] Aw, man. Too much wood. Yeah, these guys are weird. They just bent steel. I love it though, they bent steel. Hey, Rick. Can you drive a tank car for me? Ah, you wanna drive a tank? Oh, yeah. I have a Honda. Okay. Mm. Let's go for a spin. Nice. Three hundred and sixty dollars for my Honda. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. [noise] Damn, I'm leaning forward. That's a nice tank. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, you gonna fly a Stingray over there? I'm gonna fly the Stingray over there. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna Stingray 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 over there. Why not? [laughs] Oh, there's no one there. [laughs] Um, oh no. Damn. There's two um Oh. [inaudible 1:20:43.40] I'll put out the other one if you need it. Don't worry about it. Oh, I think I'm gonna wanna get this one. Here. Why? Why? You going that way? [noise] This one? [noise] I wanna Or this one? Yeah, I think I need that one. [noise] Oh, is that the one I was thinking of? That's the one I'm thinking of. [inaudible 1:21:50.46] No, it's the second one. Yeah. I think I Or is it the third? When would you go? Three hundred and fifty bucks. Oh, okay. For your Honda? But um, if you buy the Honda at, like, um a dealer's price, then I think it's worth it, like sixty bucks. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so sixty bucks. Um Not sure. Hey, a quick question for you. What's that? Um, the Honda Accord, are you familiar with that brand? Yeah, I like the Accord. Yeah, I know the Accord, yeah. What model is it? Oh yeah, you know it? Well, it says on the back of car. Well, you can know it. It says Accord, right? Yeah, the back of the car. Well, you can read it. Or you can text it. You can do either. Yeah. Yeah, I am familiar with the Accord. I've been driving it for about ten years. Okay. So, I think the Accord might be a little bit slower. Yeah, it's a little bit slower. Yeah, it's twenty bucks. Yeah, then the Accord Package. You get a lot of four-wheel drive. Yeah, all-wheel drive. Actually? Yeah. [noise] Do you think they're Canadian? Oh, they are. Canadian. I haven't seen uh any Canadian owners with that vehicle. Yeah, I bought the Accord when we were there last year. Oh, they look pretty good. Um Well, I diesel'd it. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I think the fee's around three hundred dollars. There's no tax or nothing, you get a little power station and you get a, you're getting close to it. Oh. Well, you know they're gonna change your tire fare anyways, so I'm sure there's nothing to it. Well, that's because uh, the regular rates are gonna be four hundred dollars. Well, that's why I like it. [noise] Can you continu- can you continually add a zero to your mileage? Yeah. [laughs] I have mine set to three hundred and forty-five miles per gallon. That's [noise] Yeah. [noise] Oh, yeah, so you actually have to draw for this? Yeah, I have to draw for this. Mm. Um Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty good. All right, so how do we wanna do this? Uh, what do you want? Uh, yeah, we can make the salad rolls. Yeah. Oh. Leave it on this side. Okay, that's for the salad rolls. Oh, there's not that much space for the salad rolls. There's not that much space for the salad rolls. What cuz you're gonna put on the top of the salad or is this gonna be a little bit too thin? What? We can make the salad rolls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Where's the fat? Yeah, put that in the fat. Fat falls out. Should be [inaudible 1:23:04.48] Yeah. Yeah, right here. I think the fat falls out. Yeah, just leave it in there. Okay. I mean, we can keep eating the skin. No, I think it's fine. Hey, should we s- start moving to the other place? you wanna try this Here. Here. So Jen told me to try it cuz I had it all mixed up. Oh, yeah, you gotta try it first. Yeah. Turkey pepperoni, and then there's uh, lettuce lettuce about that thing. Do you want meat? Uh, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I'll take care of it. [noise] And then we'll put marinade with the chicken thighs. What can I do, I can chop, grate. I think we need do like a pork too. Maybe chop and grate um just we are doing shreds for putting in the salad bowl. Yeah. But maybe we can slice the pork I think we should yeah, definitely slice the pork cuz [inaudible 1:03:09.64] Yes. Hm That's [inaudible 1:03:13.16] faster. Where is the grater? [inaudible 1:03:13.64] Um, you mean for the For the carrots? Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um I think it's over here Isn't it right here? I have a grater but you can You gotta slice it pretty thin. Oh, well I was gonna slice it like this. Wait, what? You grate under the grater. Yeah. We use a grater. Oh, okay. Never mind, I'm thinking of something else. Are you making lettuce with the chicken thighs? Yeah. No, it's a myself. What? You making a salad of all of them? Yeah, like all of them. Which one are you gonna make? It's like a salad of tomatoes. Can we use that one? Yeah, that works. Oh, yeah, that's easy. Okay. Um How do you want this? Do you want it like this? This looks like a potato. Are you putting, are you gonna potato this into this? Uh this I think we can potato. Potato. I can potato. Actually no, I'll just make it like this. Yeah, potato. Potato. Salad dressing? Is that more potato or do you want this one? Um, I dunno. Yeah, we can make a salad of all of them. Okay. Should I do like half of it? Yeah, make half of it. Eat her eat her salad. Fair enough. Okay, so what we'll do is uh see here. Uh chopped up little pieces, this little spatula here. Um forks? Or fork? Can we use a fork? I think a fork would be better. Um Yeah, sure. Shank knife? Hmm Yeah, sure. Tongs? Uh, they're like [inaudible 1:04:26.33] potatoes? [laughs] There ya go. Um That's good. So we're gonna be using this Oh, shoot. Oh, that's actually not what I wanted to use. No, that's okay. It's fine. It's almost done. Wanna try this? Cheese grater? Oh, yeah. Do you want some of this? Sure. Yeah, so this is like Lean Lean Creamsicle style. Grater? Yeah, I was gonna call it Lean Lean Creamsicle. I still remember those names. [laughs] Okay, this one's definitely a lot better. This looks like it's gonna be a calzone. Oh like you said [laughs] It does. Yeah, it looks like a calzone, yes. Put those on after cheese grater. Yeah, I think we can slice this one pretty thin. Yeah, it's called Slice It? Like the grater? Yeah. Yeah. Turkey pepperoni? Yeah. No, it's the calzone. Oh, calzone. Oh. Never heard that one. No, can't say I have. What is it? Almost burnt. Sausage. Avocado? Tomato? [noise] Everything there is just so beautiful and so cheap. [noise] It's in Australia, isn't it? You can't find that one. Yeah. Australia's got a lot of cheap stuff, really. Really? Yeah, like the cheap cheese stuff. Where do you usually get the prime mover? Yeah. Um, I usually get it at other places. Not T&T though. Yeah, I'm just gonna avoid that one. [laughs] Thrift store. Where do you have w- Um Oh. Take it all. Thrift store. Where's that? [inaudible 1:05:17.08] Um, Oh. Yeah, Main Street. Well Main Street, sorry. Hmm. Yeah, um I was loo
the champion from 2022, but around the outside goes the 44 of Mark Medino, the side link car. Four times champion beside him, four times champion behind him, champion of the series in the front here, so the 44 just drops back in behind Cam Bella. If history tells us anything, that'll be the last time he'll see the back of Cam Bella. He will get out after Jamie Westaway as we see Chris Lewis Williams bob the nose out of the white 944 there. And he gets away a magnificently current uh, current Victorian champion for 2023. There he is right there, that white car, car number 37. Certainly is, and he's still in the hunt for the club championship, as you mentioned a few moments ago. Mathematically still contains Chris Lewis-Williams and Cameron Bella. They're the top two. And then Adam Brew is about 30 or so points in arrears of Cameron Bella in the club standing. So it's going to take a little bit of a miracle for Adam Brewer to catch up and make it a proper three-way fight for the club honours heading into Sunday's couple of races. Uh, for the moment, Brewer sitting there back behind Mark Vadino in fifth place on the road. Mark Vadino himself, uh, Darren, wasn't he unlucky not to get his first race win at Calder last month? <laughs> he very much was. That was uh, a tough weekend. A good weekend because he got some good results. But yeah, just just getting fifth out of there. Have a good look at the Manny Matters Elvis car there, the EJM Finance outfit right alongside now. And they've been side by side for a number of calls with Andrew Jackman as well. But it looks like Manny has just dropped back there. Jared Campione in the number 88, the white, the pink stripe over the top now being challenged heavily by the 56 of Josh Brisbane. Just for goes Josh there. Josh gets a bit of, bit of, uh, bit of acceleration out of on the corner. And then the 45, which has dropped back a bit there. That's Michael Westaway. But it is uh, Jamie Westaway leading away in the Tony Westaway car, car number 50. Car number 55, just in behind there, and current, or just crowned. Actually, not even crowned yet, because the presentation dinner is until the 50th of like December. Until next month. But he's reaching out for the crown. It's in the box. For 1-800 Lasagna, they've completed one lap. It is going to be uh, Jamie Westway to Cam Bella. Chris Lewis-Williams, Medino, 56 goes wide. That is Josh Brisbane. That's a turn number two. So he's just got probably picked up a little bit of understeer there going through turn two, taking the, the corner a little bit too quickly. Two is he outside the grass. That's going to drop him back towards John Venoris, who was uh, a poor starter off the last row of the grid when the lights went out and sort of has lost touch with the pack quite early on here. Gee, I tell you what, this is typical uh, Island Magic weekend weather. Sun on one side of the track, torrential downpour, threats of thunderstorms, storms and lightning on the other side of the track and this is how it will play out all weekend long have a look at this chris lewis williams now on cameron bella this has been the state championship for 2023 exactly how it's playing out there clw showing the nose as he does in the 37. what happened to tony westaway he was in front of this group coming out of jamie, six jamie. sorry jamie was he's mr gear or something because he's gone back to sixth in the running order here so they came out of Siberia, they were almost looked like they were three wide, and he's sunk like a stone out he of the, the front has. position. So that's very, very strange for Jamie Westaway. Well, Jamie, of course, won the uh, the 2022 championship he's taken this season off. Oh, nice to see him back behind the wheel. But I tell you what, these guys that have been watching the, the top sort of four spots now, um, Bella, Lewis Williams, Vadino, Brewer and Callock, they are all well tuned there has been some very very competitive knee aggressive racing this year not not a lot of worries around contact but i tell you what the porsche 944 category over the last two seasons has come to absolute prominence the competition has been fierce the camaraderie has also been very very good in the paddock but the racing that we get to see and broadcast out on track has been second to none the 944 club have done a terrific job now everyone else in Melbourne knows about 1-800 Lasagna after uh, being on the morning show with Ross and Russ yesterday and uh, everyone in Melbourne now lining up to get their 1-800 Lasagna. Yeah, there's going to be a queue, I think, out of the restaurant at Thornbury over the next couple of weeks, especially uh, with the popularity gained by 3OW. You're absolutely right. But uh, coming back to the camaraderie point, the, the 944s, along with a lot of the other categories, they all try and group themselves together within pit lane and they all try and help each other out. That's one of the best things I love about grassroots motorsport is we've got, uh, is that Joey Kellett going a little bit wide there? 
at uh, Siberia. One of the best things about grassroots motorsport is that there's no enemies. There's everybody's friendly with everybody else. Everybody will look after you. If you need a part that uh, you've broken on your car, you can go to your next What, what do we call them then, Steve? Rivalries, rivalries, are they? They're rivalries. Friendly rivalry. Protagonists. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely no enemies in grassroots motorsport. That's the best thing about it. It's everybody's there to help everybody else and try and bring all the cars home in one piece. In fact, I was uh, talking about grassroots. I was just listening to the Race Fuels Grassroots podcast on the way down here. You might say that's a bit indulgent. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. But I was just trying to get a bit more of the backstory around Ray Hislop. We had an hour chat with him for an hour and three quarters on the podcast. And uh, it was good to just refresh my memory about the success he had, particularly in improved, improved production here in this um, event here. Side by side, Lewis Williams now gets his nose in front. The timing tells us he's got it in front by 0.1 of a second. He does. Sweeps through into the lead. A little bit of understeer into turn one there. That lets the 55 through. He'll have the inside running. Have a look at Mark Bedino. Don't worry too much about Cambella, CLW. You've got to worry about Mark Bedino coming at you. And Ads Brewer has just gone down one spot to Jamie Westaway. Ads Brewer, has his career has been on the ascension for a season and a half here. And I'll put my hand up and I'll say yes on social media. I've been cheering him on. I've been mm. encouraging him. Go for that. Go for that gold. And he doesn't need too much of encouragement because here's CLW. The inside running locks up that left. There's a tag on Chris the back Cross. there. Oh, three-way fight going into turn number four there. Miller corner. Mark Vadino pounces on a two-for-one special. What a great move. Fair dinkum. That is a great move. Mark Vadino just passed eight series champions right there in one move down into turn four. Gets that done. I think Jack Attlee, if he was here, would say the Vendetta gets to the lead. Yeah, he certainly does. We're going to miss him this weekend with the, all the nicknames for all the drivers in the, in the category. But there, that was a very opportunistic move. Torch the right front did uh, CLW going down into turn four. Chris Cross then was on for Cambella, but he didn't account for the 44 of Vadino taking away the real estate and taking away the lead of this race. What they, uh, That's probably one of the best moves I've seen down there in 944 racing for a couple of years now. Now the big question for Mark Vadino, can he hold on? Can he get that win? We were rooting for him at Calder Park and he just came up a little bit short. This is the prime opportunity now to do it. This is where he's going to show what he's got for those group of two drivers behind him that have eight titles between them. You'd have to say three more laps in this race. Bella looks out. The 44 leading the 944 field momentarily. He's going to have the inside run to turn one, but he gets the job done mid-corner. In turn one here, Cam Bella can put his thing, the number 55, anywhere he wants through turn one. So he's got a very, very nice bit of kit under him at the moment. If he can hold a tight line, one lap, and then a wide line, this is a massive battle into turn one here. Matty Metazelma, he's going to drift wide, or can he stay out wide there and carry, flow the car? And he does. He does. Flows it nicely. Jared Campione looking in there. He's getting a really good look at this one as well. So Matty Metazelma in the number 10 there. He gathers it all up, and uh, he is trying to get onto the back of Andrew Jackman, but Andrew has just moved away ever so slightly from this trio battling it out, and they are battling it out for seven, eight, nine, and 10 on the road. Yeah, that was a good uh, little exchange there going down to turn one. That actually allowed Andy, Andy Jackman in the pool master entry just to gain another handful of metres and just sort of get out of uh, out of threatening range just for a couple of minutes. But you're right, Manny Messersalm has got the eyes on here. He wants to get out after Andy Jackman and take away that seventh place finish. I also noticed that uh, Adam Brewer had gone past Chris Lewis Williams down the front straight as well. So that moves Adam up into third place on the road. That'll be good for his point as well because not only will Bella and Brewer gain over Chris Lewis Williams at this rate in the club championship it will tighten that up a little bit it will ensure that the championship still goes down to the pair of races tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow morning and he misses Selma now defending from the 88 of Jared Campione heading down into turn number 10 nicely done moved it over quite early made his intentions very very clear Headed off any possible passing move. That's one of the mooted passing spots here at Phillip Island. Down into MG Corner. Classic overtaking spot as it has been for many years here. The other one down at Miller Corner at turn number four. The AVI technology emblazoned down the side of car 88 of Jared Campione. Also on this one here, car number three adds Brewer. Reining back up into contention here. P3 on the road. He's got the... Uh, 
soon to be crowned champion. Points will tell us he is the champion, but uh, the presentation has not taken place yet. So I think that's called champion elect, isn't it? Yes, You're, correct. Uh, just about to take the, well, you've taken the championship, but you haven't got it yet. Certainly in the club championship, uh, CLW, that white car, the tyre power Vanilla car. And by the way, if you drive to Vanilla and you want a set of tyres, Tell CLW you saw him at uh, racing in the 944s and he will set you up with a ripper deal. And I would almost suggest give him a call before you leave Melbourne and he'll, see, he'll make it worthwhile if you drive up to uh, Benalla to get a set of tyres fitted and get a, uh, get a wheel balance and alignment as well. So our lead has now gone back to four times champion Cameron Bella. Something that both he and CLW now have a special award if either of them win the championship next year. They Whoops. get to join Craig Baird and be five times champion of Porsche Racing as the 45 of Michael oh, Westaway. Westaway loops it round there. You have to be careful here too. There'll be a couple of cars behind him coming around uh, Siberia in the next few seconds, but it looks like he's managed to get, and get that one going before they arrive on the scene. So this battle group of four is now three. Yes, and still has a good little advantage there to Andy Jackman. Uh, in seventh place, so they're not, they haven't really caught him uh, at the rate that I was expecting to. Going a little bit wide there for Jared Campione at turn 10. That'll uh, affect his run all the way around 12 and down the straight there. He's had to just get back out of it, swerve the car to the right. Nice bit of hard stand that the track has there off the back of the Ripper Strip there, rather than heading off and off the wet grass as it is. It's very damp underfoot if you get off in the grass here with all the rain we've had over the last sort of 18 hours or so. You remember that all of that was new earlier this year as well, especially laid down for MotoGP at several parts of the circuit, turn one, turn two. There's a little bit of that. You can see it there on the screen, that extra black bit of tarmac on the backside of the ripple strips. They've done that around the whole entire circuit. Aren't we lucky, MotoGP? Uh, mm. to put down all these standards around the track here. The one thing I noticed as soon as I drove in here today is the bitumen plant that they've uh, rectified yes. here in the pits area. So straight after this weekend, the place gets a fresh resurface. So that just makes a billiard, billiard ball table smooth racetrack even better. Yeah, we've got to look forward to next year as well and just see how many lap records potentially are going to get close to, if not broken. There's definitely a couple on, this, on the, uh, the program that I, I bought off and thought we might get close next year with a fresh set of bitumen because typically that's what happens when the new surface goes down. Cameron Bella hasn't been able to kick away here from Mark Verdino, so Verdino's doing a really good job to keep him in the gun sights as what we come to what I would believe is the final lap, if not and the second last lap, just looking at the timing screens. I'd say there's probably going to be one more by the time they get to the line. It's going to be about a minute left uh, on the clock. Yeah, I would suggest this will be uh, the penultimate lap. And uh, I'm not sure, during the state rounds this year, we've been seeing a last, uh, last lap board go out. The schedule but, says uh, one minute uh, or one lap after a certain time that's expired. So that does. would suggest that it's going to be two more laps. Agreed. So sports and ends are the next category on side-by-side -side action. As always, in 944s, Cam Bella with Vedino and Ads Brewer weighing in here. Do Vedino and Brewer act together over the next uh, nine kilometres just to get through on Cambella. I'll tell you what though, Brewer, he will have reached up for that mirror, tipped it sideways and said, I'm not going to worry about CLW. I spent all the weekend at Calder with that. But what he's got in front of him is a very juicy race with car number 44 of Mark Vedino. There might and be two moves here at turn four, one for second place and one for fourth place with Brewer had a good run out of turn two, but couldn't quite do anything with it. And now Vedino defends and the same can be said about uh, Lewis Williams there as well, having to fend off the advances of Jamie Westaway at the same corner. Jamie's found his pace again in this one. And they will be working hard on that car to give it some tweaks to make it uh, perform like his bronze car, the Oldsfield Oil Distributors outfit that he won the championship with in 2022. Jumping aboard Tony's car here for this weekend. So race control is letting us know that the last lap is uh, happening right now by the centre of it. They, and it looks like they might be... Are they readying the chequered flag down there at one uh, more race lap. control? There so there is this one more lap. Come round. This is the penultimate yep, we lap. Go. We will go one more. So race control just correcting themselves there. The car three goes down the inside there. Adds Brewer challenging on the inside of the 44. The 37 sees an opportunity. That's Chris Lewis-Williams. The Vendetta holds onto the tight line. And Brewer goes high and wide, a little bit of NASCAR style, out in the marbles. He's got a long, long, looping way to go if he can 
keep the pedal into it. He is going to have great pace by the end of the straight. The problem is he's been left out of the slipstream and they are literally going to be four wide by the time they get down to turn one. So Jamie Westaway pops off the back here. The 44 goes back and loses two spots. Oh, one not. spot, two spot, two one spots. and a half spot. Two spot at this point here, because on the inside for the next corner, it goes to the left, and Vadino can force Brewer to go the long way. That's a really, really high level of commitment from Brewer. Stayed in it and stayed with it longer than I thought, and Vadino left in the space. So they're going to fight this out now, down all the way to turn four. Have a look at CLW, though. He's gone. He's shown these guys a clean set of heels, and he is now out after Cambella. But this is a good run here by Ads Brewer. Puts him to the inside of turn four. This is the big back down through the gearbox on the brakes. They remain side by side. This will swing back to Vadino if he can keep it there. Gets oh, it out quite. onto a hard stand again. That'll be it. That's that'll, it. They've that'll sorted it. it out. That started coming out of MG corner, coming out of turn nine. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they sorted it out. Yeah, better part of half a lap spent side by side. What great racing to open proceedings here at Isle of Magic 2023. That was a free kick that uh, Cameron Bella needed. That little argument down the front straight gave him enough real estate to maintain the margin he's got over Chris Lewis Williams at the moment. Although CLW has taken away some of that advantage in the last half a lap, but unfortunately he looks like he's going to run out of time to take honours in preliminary number one for the Endeavour Cup, which of course is awarded tomorrow afternoon. So the 55 four-time champion Cameron Bella, he's won this event twice before and he's going to start the weekend in a perfect way picking up preliminary win number one ahead of Chris Lewis Williams and Adam Brewer. Great race there, really, really smart way to open proceedings for the 33rd running of Island Magic brought to you by the Fulham Island Auto Racing Club and all their supporters. The race continues for the Miners. Bella takes the win over Lewis Williams, Brewer, Vadino, Joey Kellock home in the 77. Then it's uh, Jamie Westaway, and now we've got the rest of the field. Pointing towards the check and flag, quite a big gap in fact. It's uh, out over 29 seconds to uh, this lot that are racing for 7, 8, 9 and 10. So it goes to Jackman, Menizalma, Josh Brisbane. Brisbane. He worked his way back into that. He was he was outside that group about three laps ago. He put in some stellar laps in the last couple of uh, moments of that race to get back into the top ten. And at the demise of uh, Jared Campioni there, sadly, mm. John Benoris is uh, just coming around the top end of the track now as well to bring home the last car for uh, the 944s. And uh, there it is. Confirmation final results for the 1800 Lasagna 944s. And uh, we're looking forward to their racing ride throughout the weekend. Bella to Lewis Williams, Adam Brewer home in third, Mark Vadino in fourth, Joey Kellock fifth, Tony Westaway, in fact, that's Jamie Westaway in sixth, seventh is Andy Jackman, eighth is Manny Menazelma, Josh Brisbane, Jared Campy only rounding out our 10. A lap record being held by, it says Anthony Westaway, it's probably Jamie Westaway, oh, sorry, fastest lap is 150.47. John Benoris, Michael Westaway, and sadly, Mark Torbett's not uh, getting more than one lap in that race. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Mark Torbett's after that one. Just uh, completed the first lap and he came in, and then we saw the, uh, the spin out of Siberia for Michael Westaway, both the only two non-finishers in that race. We're going to have to catch our breath now, Steve, because Sports Sedan's out on track next. We'll be back in just a couple of notes with the big bangers of Australian motorsport, the Sports Sedans.
like my whole bedroom and listen to someone probably living in there. <laughs> yeah, I can hide. Welcome back trackside here for the 33rd running of the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club. Pyark to its friends here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Check it out at www.pyark.com.au. A big list of partners every year that help make this uh, Island Magic event such a legendary event on the Victorian and in some ways national scene. Traction tyres down there, Andrew McCarthy and the guys at the uh, Traction Tyre Centre in Roeville. Ramada Resort here at Phillip Island, the Assola de Capri. Prominent uh, position right there in Thompson Street and Cows to have your, uh, your lunch and your dinner there. Speco BHT for many, many years of loyal support and we send our uh, deepest sympathies to uh, all of the family down there of Brian Sambo Sampson. Sadly, this week uh, we lost him, but we'll come to that more during Formula V races. SD Picks, of course, Race Fuels, the uh, purpose built fuel compound down here, which is uh, fantastic. They've got on site fuel now at Queensland Raceway and also at Sydney Motorsport Park, and they do a job second to none. In fact, this weekend, Island Magic, they're in Adelaide for the Adelaide 500 and uh, of course at Queensland Raceway as well. They have got stuff going, I mean, all over the place and as well as Drive Bathurst. So they are very, very busy. Cool Drive, uh, what a fantastic uh, motorsport family the Blanchards are. Many, many years of support for Island Magic. Scarcella Design, Motorsport Australia, and of course the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit for this magnificent facility that we just love coming to. Turns on great racing every time we come here. Sports sedans are now rolling around on track. The big bangers of Australian motorsport will jump through this grid sheet. Dean Cam, multiple Victorian champion, had many, many tilts at a national title as well with the Kerrick sports sedans and indeed the Precision International sports sedans as well. Dean leading the field there in that blue, white and black Corvette. Richard Newman right alongside. Rick Newman as well there. Francois Habib in the... Uh, X supercar, that's that one there. Then we go to Milton Seferis. It's been a long time since we've seen Milton at the 50k plate. A guy that contended many, many of them over the years. A famous one with Richard Catchlove here uh, many years ago. Gary Collins, the next one in line there in the 96 X supercar as well. Ben McLeod in the number 72, the magnificent looking red Commodore. And uh, that car goes from strength to strength right throughout this season and last season in sports and has been a bit of a break for the sports and hands locally. But uh, that VZ from Black Mambo Racing, forward to seeing how he acquits himself. Cam McKee in the number 44 Red Falcon. Then we go to Craig Linsell, back to Michael Bluff, Andrew Goldman, David Shaw, Paul Cannell, and Michael Robinson on uh, on our bridge sheet here. I cannot see Robbo no, out there to I, save myself. No, I don't believe that's the case. I, I haven't seen Michael Robinson so far this morning in my tours of the paddock. I did see there was one of the historic touring cars on the back of the grid just doing a, an installation lap, and I thought, don't tell me Robbo switched cars yes. for a minute, but <laughs> I think Robbo <laughs> prefers machinery that goes a little bit quicker than that. The Groove Train Eastland supporting the... Uh, this is a round of the state series, in fact, every year because yes. Sportsman's one run their round in August, so this is actually a live Victorian championship unfolding in front of us. Also supported by QP Loops and the National Blind Suppliers. Front row, Rick Newman has not joined our mm, field. He that's a big is question. leaving the spot vacant right on the front there. Dean Cam has got the nose right over the start line there. Not sure how that plays out for Dean. But we look to the second row of the grid and this could be a supercars race from uh, about 15 years ago. Milton Seferis, a big fan of XHRT and Brock race cars. He engages the gear as well, and they are away. There's a number of cars moving there. Collins doesn't get away in the number 96. McKee does nicely. In fact, McKee gets away very well. The 72 of Ben McLeod gets away nicely too. And there was a white Commodore, didn't quite get that one. That's the uh, car that was built as an improved production car, the number 35 of Michael Luff been an eight-year build for that car and uh, really looking forward to seeing how that car acquits itself. Milton Seferis just finding his feet again 
Been a long time since he's raced at this echelon, this top, uh, top end of Victorian sports sedans. Looking forward to seeing Milton get right back into it here. That was a really awkward start for a Wasn't number it? of drivers on the grid. There was a couple of drivers that were rolling or very close to rolling and not sure if they got it quite stopped before the start. Yeah, Dean Cam, who was definitely looked like he had his front wheels beyond the grid position, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a penalty flash up for him. Uh, Although he through... stopped there. That was his mm. stopping spot from yes. the, the parade lap or the formation lap, so that may not create too much angst, but certainly depends on... Of, uh, how uh, antsy the uh, the judges of fact are, then how uh, how they'll deal with that. I would be inclined to say let it go. He'd yeah, stopped there. He'd been stopped there for 30 or 40 seconds. But uh, have a look at this. Collins all over the back of the 33 of Craig Linsell. That would be a bit of a daunting task, wouldn't it, to have a uh, ex Jack Daniels um, Kelly brothers racing Commodore ranging all over the back of your uh, JCW. Absolutely, and uh, those the JCW is sort of a car that we normally sort of see in the under two litre sport sedans, which of course New South Wales have a, a bit of a stranglehold on that, don't they? They've got plenty of great uh, under two litre sport sedans up there. They've raced here at Island Magic uh, before. They've raced here at uh, August Access and several other meets in the past. They go well, the, uh, the under two litre sport sedans around here, but uh, they've got nothing on their, uh, their big brother rivals at the, the big V8s under the bonnet. Dean Cam's thing normally starts like a pro stock drag car. He even looked to be off-footed as well that time around. Didn't get his sort of traditional start. The car sort of points its nose in the air and uh, off it goes. And we're seeing Dean doing that now. A, uh, a very well-acquitted, great race car driver. Very, very entertaining guy behind the wheel of a race car and, in fact, out of the race car as well. He also owns an S5000 uh, as well, so I've seen him jump and into a, that well, a few and times. And a Formula 5000. He's 5, got a Chevron. Too, yes. yeah. He's got a Chevron, which he, he's been taken over to the USA this year and been running in the uh, the Monterey's and those sorts of... Uh, uh, actually, I don't think it was Monterey. Laguna Seca and stuff like that with his Chevron in the uh, Formula 5000 specification from the 70s. And uh, I, I don't know whether this car is his favourite race car, but he's had some over the years. He had the old Bruce Coombe Commodore there for a while. He had an RX-7 where he started off in club cars. The Coombe car was a, a club car, then improved production car. Uh, then he uh, moved into sports sedans. He had that magnificent Honda, which I think is being run by Team Tilton in the National Series currently. And uh, he got his hands on this Corvette, it seems like about 20 years ago. It's probably not that, it's probably about 15 years ago. But it is always, always out in front. This guy here, when he raced full-time in sports sedans in various ex-supercar uh, pieces of kit, Milton Seferis, always does very well, a fearsome competitor. And the guy sandwiched in between them, Francois Habib, an absolute wonderful guy, not, not, the, uh, not your stereotypical race car driver, the man that owns National Blind Supplies. Lovely bloke, quietly spoken, loves his sports sedans and uh, does everything to encourage people to come along and join in and be part of it and uh, really doing a, a terrific job. In fact, Francois has got his head, both his hands out on the state championship at the moment. He'd love to be taking it up to Dean Cam as we see the Collins car here at the moment. This is Gary Collins. And yes, this is the real McCoy as it ran in the Supercars Championship. I think we've got Dunlop, uh, so it's got the uh, development series number plates on it at the moment, or stick it up plates. It's still eligible for Dunlop Super 3, I believe, as well. Uh, if memory serves me correctly. And so is so Francois, Francois Habib's in the VZ as well. Yeah. And they have run in a couple of previous rounds of uh, you know, supercar support competition, although a number of those cars are sort of now starting to filter their way down into the, uh, what is now the Kumo series. Uh, over the course of time. That's still a very, very good series in its own right, but good to see that the old machinery still gets to have a home. I think that's probably what a lot of people were, were questioning sort of back in the day is when all these cars get handed down, they get handed down throughout all the years, what are they going to do with them? They're not just going to sit them all in a museum and it's good that people can go out, look, feel, touch and, you know, and listen to what they've still got to offer after all these years of still giving good service uh, to the racetrack. Just getting some feedback from around the track and yes, it is. The 94 has got some smoke coming out of the back. That is not an excellent supercar. That's a purpose-built um, sports sedan. David Shaw, the truck ride car. A uh, very, very nice looking AU and has a, uh, a cult following as does Cam McKee's car. These AUs do tend to attract a, uh, a bit of a cult following across the top of the hill here and plunging down into turn four. And uh, looks the goods here are very uh, smart looking 
livery on there. You can see the tribute to the Glen Seaton type of uh, livery that was run in the Ford Credit Tickford days. There's Cam McKee in the 44 and uh, Ben McLeod just up the road. Just looking uh, in position four and five at the moment. Dean Cam leads the way to Francois Habib, Milton Ferris. This car here, Ben McLeod in the Black Mamba racing outfit and the advanced car carrier's car of number 14 and Toro Turf Care there with uh, Cam McKee. Ben McLeod's had a solid year, I think, Darren. He's had, I think, uh, a round win at one point in the year earlier in the Victorian State Series. He's uh, driven very, very well. I don't think he's really put a foot wrong. If anything's happened to him, it's not been of his own doing. Oh, you're, you're exactly right. You've hit the nail on the head there, Steve. Very, very impressive race driver is uh, Ben. Um, he does a terrific job. VZ Commodore, six litre LS engine, HDT, HGT sequential six speed gearbox with a nine inch in it. Black Mamba Racing, which is him, Sanderson Contracting, Phillip Island Cottage's exotic graphics down there and Caram Downs do a terrific job. Doyle Pump and Engineering, Alpha Accident and Viking Windscreens. I know that because he gave me all of his sponsors in a list and wanted me to read them out. So tick in the boxes for you, Ben, and keep up the entertainment. We will love watching how he goes about his racing and the car is prepared to within one thou of itself. It is just mm. a brilliant looking car. Dean Cam leads the way, a purposeful looking sports sedan this one it is done a lot a lot of racing it continues to do a lot of racing recently had a repaint on it so giving it a bit of a, a tidy up well worth the visit down to have a look at uh, this car it is a absolute ripping racing car this fantastic shot we've got up there on the uh, on the scaffold and uh, we've just been hearing that Dean Cam's got an issue there, that the brake lights aren't working on that car. He'd be on the brakes there, so it didn't look like they were lit up there. So that information appears to be true around the track. But boy, oh boy, gee, it's nice flat, doesn't it? Just, just accelerates away right up the hill here. Sweeps to the left, back to the right, out onto the ripple strip a bit there. You don't do that when there's rain about. Dean knows that. There's not too many that will have done as many laps for Phillip Island as this guy in car number 66. Uh, certainly not. Last time around, he doubled his advantage over Francois Habib as well. It was about 1.6 seconds. It's now 3.2. It's probably going to get a little bit more than that in the next few seconds or so when he crosses the stripe and then we wait to see what happens to Francois. Uh, Milton Seferis doing a good job to stay in touch with Francois. He was actually quicker than Francois Habib on the last lap by two tenths of a second. So that's starting to tighten up just a little bit. Uh, between the two, although Francois appears to be responding and just trying to hold that margin at uh, roughly around a second and a bit coming onto the front straight. Let's get the times for you this time. So Cam into the 39s, 39-1, 41-8 for Habib, 41-8 for Seferis as well. So it was the other, it was a two-tenth of a second advantage on the previous lap to Seferis. Now Habib's starting to realise that he doesn't need, want to be reeled in and starting to uh, put the hammer down just a little bit more. Milton Ferris, of course, his entry is Highbury Automotive on Highbury Road there. Many, many years the proprietor there, but uh, obviously in that HRT Red Rooster livery. Car looks at me and Bucks. Here comes Gary Collins as well in the Jack Daniels livery there as well, a Kelly Racing outfit. And there is the uh, car of uh, Cam McKee. Sorry, no, it wasn't. Luff, luff. Sorry, that was um, Luff. Sorry about that. And uh, in the number 35, of course, a uh, long build program there. And this is the uh, the 33 coming along now of Linsel. Got a uh, pretty compact field. Only uh, 13 sports sedans here this weekend. It has been a very heavy schedule of late with um, Precision International National Sports Sedans running at both Bathurst and Gold Coast and those State Series competitors that made themselves eligible did do those events so they can be big big cost events for a state level uh, sports sedan but I tell you what Steve uh, and you wouldn't get too much argument from you and I on that if you could you would wouldn't you? Yeah absolutely like there's a few events that are on the calendar for next year as well uh, the uh, so like support act for improved production uh, at the Bathurst six hour and you're right it's not exactly cheap to do those sorts of events so you can imagine what it's going to be like when you're on the national stage you know supporting supercars we've seen a lot of grassroots categories over the years go and support uh, at various supercars events it's great for the exposure it's great to you know 
put those cars out there, try and bring new people into the clubs and into the uh, into local state racing. But yeah, to do the actual events themselves, um, they're not cheap. But for a lot of people, they would absolutely say, "Yep, tick, it's a tick box item. It is worth it." Have a key now. This is a turbocharged six-cylinder AU, and obviously gets hot under the bonnet when you look at all the fluting he's got uh, there to get the heat out. He is chasing down Ben McLeod at the moment. But you get the feeling that they're match, really just matching each other lap time for lap time. Ben's fastest lap of 41.9, a 42.4 for uh, Cam last time round, a 42.3 and a 43.5. So Cam not being able to match there, and he's also got uh, going around the MotoGP Joker, Joker lap there, so he will lose further time there. So Ben McLeod, next time he looks in the mirrors, there will not be a red and white AU Falcon with a black bonnet ranging up behind him. In fact, he'll have clean air behind him. That sounds amazing, that six-cylinder turbocharged outfit. Here comes the 72. Some brilliant driving. Steve and I have already sung the praises. We probably want to leave that to one side. We're not going to mm -hmm. give him any, any curse there at all, but doing a ripping job. Great long shot down the straight here with David Shaw in the foreground, the number seven there of Cornell. Cam's really moved his margin out now here. He's out to 7.3 seconds, so two minutes left on the clock. He's going to be very much in a cruise control mode at the moment. Brake light's still not working. They'll probably just be in a little electrical gremlin, I would say. They did have the back half of the, the bodywork off that car in the pit paddock after qualifying. They're doing a little bit of uh, mechanical repair. He's just rounded up Paul Cornell in the WRX, heading down into turn three and four. David Shaw's the next man it's going to be in the gun sights for the pilot of the number 66. Despite uh, not sounding 100%, David Shaw has continued on. And let's Dean Cam through there at uh, what we call the inconsequential corner here at Phillip Island, which is turn five. It is officially a corner, but it's a little kink in the, uh, in the, in the road between turns four and six. So it really is a corner you don't really have to pay too much attention to because you're mostly lining up the car for the next corner which is Siberia at, uh, at turn six. Gee, Dean would be uh, very, very excited to get this uh, race win. He's done many, many 50K plates. He has not put his name on one of them. And I hark right back to when he started in sports sedans. It was Dean Randall in the Saab, Chris Musket for a couple in the RX-7 from centerline suspension. And then we go to uh, Darren Hossack in the Saab. A couple more to Dean Randall in the Saab. Then Glenn Hastings won in the uh, Cortina V8 in the yellow uh, car there for the Parodas, which was a, uh, a very controversial victory. Then we go to Michael Robinson, who's won it a couple of times. Tony Rigadello in 2009. Then Darren Hossack again. Robbo again. Stephen Tomasi took his first win in the Calibra Chev in 2012. Ron Moller came from WA in 2013 to win it in the Camaro. Then Michael Robinson, 2014, 2015. Bruce Banks. And the first of the rotary wins for over a decade. The one prior to that was Musket. Mm. And then we go John Lawson. Wow. That little almost road going STI WRX. Pouring rain. I was about to say Absolutely it would have been, too, been a Pouring win. rain. And he came home for the win. Would have been a wet race. Had to do the WRX to win. I mean, that'll be yep. something we look forward to tomorrow if it does rain, how uh, Paul Cornell and the WRX goes. So John Lawson won the 2017. Stephen Tomasi, then Daniel Tomasi. Steve Tomasi, 2020 and 2021. And Tony Groves won it last year, 2022. Yeah, so you know what that means, Darren. It means with uh, defending champion Tony Groves not here for the 50K plate this weekend, looking at the entry list, we will have a new name that takes home the 50K plate. So it's been a little while since we had a, a new name on the plate. Tony Groves got his first one last year, but then before that, he just mentioned the Tamazis had a stranglehold on it for several years. Well, they did. They did. From, from 2020, 2018, the 50K plate was won by Stephen three times and Daniel once. And... Um, um, that's, you know, that's a pretty big stranglehold, as you said. Michael Robinson um, has been the most repetitive winner there. He's got uh, four. Uh, Dean Randall, actually, in fact, Dean Randall has got... No, Dean's got three. Chris Musket, two. But we hark right back. Brian Thompson won the, uh, the 50K plate right back in 1972 over Tom Norton in a Porsche 911S when they were running. Last lap board is being displayed. 
Um, Tom Norton, Phil Brock, Alan Gow in a Tirana L34. So back in the uh, touring car days, Gary Rogers won it in the GDS Monaro, Tony Hubbard, Bill Emini, Barry Jamison, Bob Jolly, Mike Emery, uh, Robin Doherty, Bruce Deboo, in when he changed over from the ballot to the RX-7, had a win in it as well. So uh, many great names there as well. Richard Catchlove won it at the turn of the century in 2000 in his RX-7. The same time he won the uh, the championship that year as well in Victoria. So lots of names there for Dean Camp to uh, run his finger over and see if he can join that uh, group of competitors. His fastest lap, a 138.42. We're a long way off the 127.7 of Jack Perkins. Yeah, that's going to be a record I think we look towards next year and sort of wonder how on earth we're going to get close to that. Well, record. Thomas Randall tried, didn't he? He did. He tried earlier this year and then the uh, the tyre unfortunately let go as he was gearing up to have another crack at it and, uh, and that was that. So he hopefully we'll see him back next year to give it a crack. But just one corner to go here for Dean Cam. Dominant win in preliminary number one for Ramada Resorts in the 50k plate race tomorrow afternoon. One of the highlights here at Island Magic every year. Dean Campbell salute preliminary number one by a country mile in about 13 to 14 seconds over Francois Habib, who himself has managed to kick away from uh, Seferis in the last sort of three or four laps. Dean Cam did it nice and easy there. In fact, he eased off on the last two of 141 and a 140 there, so he's just managed the car there. Brings it to uh, brings it to the chequered flag. Not an issue of not having brake lights. There wasn't anyone close enough to see it in the end there. So Dean gets home with that victory. Another points consolidation there for Francois Habib with Milton Severus. Welcome back to Sports at Anning. Milton Severus takes a podium in his return race. Ben McLeod in the number 72 and a magnificent looking race car, as is the 44 of Cam McKee, Gary Collins in the Jack Daniels livery number 96 to Michael Luff in the all-white VE car. Commodore number 35 will be bringing it around the top of the uh, the course now to uh, Craig Linsell, David Shaw and Paul Cornell as we just watch Michael Luff coming around the last corner, a car that was initially built for improved production now doing sports sedan racing and uh, to be uh, down the straight there. So that will see the uh, preliminary done for the Sports Advance, the Groove Train Eastland QP Lubes National Blind Suppliers. Get down to the Groove Train, owned by one of the uh, Sports Advance competitors, Bin Stenter at Eastland, full service restaurant, cafe and bar, offering a wide range of catering to many tastes in a relaxed atmosphere shop. 24 third floor next to the Hoyt Cinemas in the Eastland Shopping Centre. We've got plenty more coming at Island Magic 2023 for you. Improved production up next.
Stuck here with your third act. This is Mission Control. Identify yourself. Give me a position. Name Striker. I'm sitting down and facing the front. Why would you want to know that? Striker. This is Mission Control. Identify yourself. Give me a position. Name Striker. I'm sitting down and facing the front. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Sports sedans have had their first race, and it was a ripper for Dean Cam. Here we roll out 
an event that Dean Cam cut his teeth in, the Matthew Flinders Plate. It was initially created for sports sedans back in the old Australia Day, famous Australia Day summer meetings here at Phillip Island, converted to a club car status race meeting in, uh, in the 90s and was now being improved production since the uh, demise of club cars in the late 2000s. Proven to be a major draw card, draw card with up to full fields, sometimes two or three, especially since improved production nationals in 99, which was massive here. The Yokohama nationals in 99, I remember it very well. And in fact, they were very successfully conducted here also in 2004 and 2009. And uh, at that particular one, there was 96 cars entered. And Steve and I were just talking about the last one. I think it was around 130 or 138 or something. Yeah, pretty close cars. to a record field. For that, the Matthew Flinders plate's been won by a couple of big names along the way. Bob Jane, John Harvey, Murray Carter, John Pollard, Bruce Young. Andy Brown was uh, a demon in his RX3 in the club car days here. Multiple winner of it. Phil Morris, also multiple winner. And Ken Douglas in his RX7, multiple winner. Warwick Massey. Mario Caligari, Dennis Gallagher, the great man, won here. Andy Brown, Rowan Ambrose also won here. Of course, his son, Cadell, won the XL Championship in Victoria here just this year. Wayne Wakefield, Leanne Tander, the list goes on. Mario Caligari, Anthony Wallace, Ben Shoots numerous times. Lee Forrest as well, James Atkinson, Kane Verecker, Ray Hislop, multiple victories here. Damian Milano, Andrew Butcher, Paul Cruz, and Adam Poole has also won here as well. And you would have to say with the guy sitting on pole, Steve, Adam Poole's a fairly good opportunity. Current reigning national champion, outgoing Victorian champion, or actually reigning national champion yep. until the trophies are given. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, certainly a great field here today. Yes, a real sir. mix of uh, interstate as well. There's some good ones there. Yeah, absolutely. We've uh, been very, very fortunate over the last two years. We've had a couple of uh, competitors come from interstate just to try their hand at the uh, Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Last year, we had uh, the likes of Justin Wade from Queensland come down uh, and try his hand. He actually had Ray Hislop on the spanners that weekend as well because it was Ray's old car that uh, he now possesses, has possessed for some years now. And this weekend, we're good to welcome back uh, Max Demerick from South Australia, along with uh, his fellow South Australian, uh, Adam Poole, who's on the pole. Uh, Lockie McBrien from New South Wales has been a regular feature in uh, several uh, Victorian races uh, over the last several years, so we kind of call him one of our own because he comes quite regularly. And all the way from Western Australia with the VN Commodore, John Caligari, for his first outing here at, uh, at Phillip Island. And he had a smile that you could not get off his face yesterday, apparently, as well. He absolutely loves this track, and he did 147.1 in qualifying, which is probably one of the fastest laps I've seen a VN Commodore do around here. I was just having a look at the, the timing from the last uh, several years, the likes of Andrew Rhodes Anderson and Troy Lloyd, who have got uh, some pretty uh, stout VNs uh, under their right foot, and uh, he was right up there. So that's a great time from John. Certainly is, and uh, the first of the Victorians is on the second row of the grid. In fact, P4, Andrew Butcher, great to see the, the number 59 BMW M3 there. He's uh, coming along very well, did a good job at, uh, at Calder. Matty Logan, out of six, he is uh, probably, I guess, out of the Victorians, the most incumbent uh, to, to try and get this win. Got some work to do from the third row of the grid, considering Adam Poole's on the front row of the mm -hmm. grid. And he's been hard to catch over the last few seasons. Larry Merriweather, Craig Kasperas, Kevin Coulson, Glenn Boyd, Chris Stillo, Brendan Sala and Chris Bodle. Some names there that we're not really used to uh, running in improved production, but uh, let's have a look here. It's an inter oh, not international, it's a national type field. Mm -hmm. Pull the revs rise, Max Demerick gets left on the grid there. McBride gets away in the BM car. The turbo winds up on the car of Max Demerick and he charges down into turn one. Adam Pull opens it up wide and LS the world down into turn number one. Certainly is. I'm not sure if Max just missed the lights and just sort of didn't quite get the reaction time that he wanted. Otherwise, it looked like Paul had an absolute stellar launch. Here comes uh, McBrien right around the outside of the Nissan Silvia at turn number two. That's a bold move going a long way around. If you're going to threaten Adam Paul, this is the opportunity to do it. You've got to do it on the opening lap if, he's, uh, if he has a poor start. But uh, right now, look at the horsepower that just kicks in, pushes out of turn number three. 
and uh, heads all the way down towards Miller Corner at four. And it might be a case of see you later unless something drastic happens in the next couple of minutes. Max Demerit knows better than most the South Australian. He knows what Adam Poole's pace is about. But I tell you what, this Nissan Sylvia, like many of them around the country now, are the, the rising car against the LS-powered Monaros and Commodores that we're seeing. So we see this uh, whole pot turbocharged package with numerous drivers around the, the country. Of course, the, um, the Nationals this year will run at Eastern Creek with pretty short notice, in fact, at the um, first round of the Trophy Series run by Motorsport Australia, the Shannon's Trophy Series. And down the inside, oh. this is exactly what Max had to do. That is the move he had to do. He had to chop him off with the knees in the first lap. Car number one gets put back a spot by car number 25. Talking about John Harvey, he made that number famous in the Marlboro Holden dealer team over many years. But let's just watch now. Let's see the power of the TRP Duckworth car. We can get back in front of this turbocharged car. These turbocharged cars are no slouch in a straight line. But I tell you what, Adam Paul has proven he's no slouch in a straight line either. Yeah, he's got nothing for him in a straight line. That was a really bold move from Max Demerick down into turn 10. Exactly what he had to do uh, to try and sort of upset the rhythm of Adam Paul. Coming through the final corner there as well, Paul had to prop. Uh, coming through uh, on the accelerator and just bide his time and just wait until the track opened up before he managed to make the pass down the front straight. They're coming back to the Nissan Silvias. They are starting to become uh, quite a, a powerful little weapon. We've seen Scott Cooks, another fast one in South Australia. Paul Cruz here in, uh, in Victoria has got uh, the bright orange one and uh, former winner in 2020 of the Matthew Flinders Plate as well. And uh, only a couple of small modifications for Max Demerick uh, between uh, years here. He was here last year. And uh, from what I hear, he's actually got a, a sequential Hollinger gearbox in that car now, as opposed to what he had last year. So making good use of the new hardware available to him and uh, setting some great lap times as well. Just looking back, Phil Morris was uh, the first of the Datsuns to win in 1992 in the Matthew Flinders plate. Then it was all the way through to 2007 was Mazda's RX-3s and RX-7s, then it was Lee Forrest in the Turbo Celica. Their very next Datsun to win was Paul Cruz, as you touched on there, Steve. Yeah, so uh, let's hope that uh, Max Merrick can keep up with Adam Poole. Adam has uh, just shown him a one set of heels since they first came around turn 12. Merrick was in the lead last time around on this lap at the top of the track. He's still in P2, and that gap, sadly, is opening up. Don't lose faith, Max. Hang in there. Just got myself and keeping keeping an eye on the timing screens because I was watching what was happening over the course of uh, qualifying and Paul absolutely lit the timing screens up. Now officially, I know this hadn't been something that had been uh, ticked off from uh, last year because he had set a 139.88 last year to take away Ray's Hislop's lap record. And now the timing's actually got him at a 139.94, which is still under what Ray's record was from 2016. I, just a bit, I, was, I was talking to Adam in the, uh, the pit paddock earlier in the day and I'm like, they, they didn't update your time for some reason, but I said, he, he said, well, now I've got a point to prove, I've just got to go out there and break it again. That's precisely and what he has. he's done. <laughs> he's gone and broken it again. We had so. to wait all of two laps to, uh, to see that. And, and Ray Hislop actually, um, again, on the Grassroots Racing podcast, congratulated Mooley mm. for uh, the, his resetting of these lap records. You know, they, uh, these guys, they like them while they've got them, but if they're no longer in the class, then they, they move on to the next fastest guy along the road. So That's right. It's good to see Adam Poole there. He has really stepped in and up the level again. There has been numerous competitors in this type of racing club cars and improved production over the years that have upped it. Big one, round the top, lock up, drifting across Lukey Heights, locked it up. This is what I'm saying to Max Demerit, don't lose faith, hang in there. Mm. Be there, to ready to pounce. And it looks like he is, he's, he's doing the best he can. This is the battle for the, the next best, if you like, Steve, mm -hmm. we're, we're watching here as well. There's Matty Logan, he's uh, carrying a big weight as is uh, Butcher as well, trying to carry the Victorian, wave the Victorian flag. and. Carry it through. Let's have a look at the gap now. Pool, last time around it was 3.7 seconds to Max Demerick in the uh, Nits Nissan. Oh, He's now that seven is. seconds. He's done that gap. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's not a surprise. So Demerick's dropped into the 44s, Pool in the 40s. Now that's a good uh, second and a half slower than what they were doing in qualifying trim uh, earlier this morning. 
You're keeping an eye there on uh, John Caligari in the Cal West Resources entry. He's keeping Matt Logan very honest uh, for fifth place at the moment. So that's a good run for the, uh, the VNSS Commodore there. We go back and have a look at something that's sort of started to emerge into improved production over the last couple of rounds. Started really last year when we had the likes of uh, Michael Sinclair and Scott Appledore bring their little Hyundai XLs into improved production. In fact, they were cross-entering at that point in time and just basically having to change the tyres on the car from uh, what was the, uh, the Federal uh, RSR, which was uh, now has admitted its demise in... XL Racing over to the Yokohama AO50 and now we're starting to see a lot of the uh, the drivers from the Hyundai XLs that uh, don't want to run in that category anymore. They've found a home in what is technically the under 1.6 litre cars in improved production. We're starting to see them become more and more regular and it's great to see. It's good to have a little bit of a sort of a different class and a bit of a, a different look and feel about improved production, almost like a, a changing of the guard, so to speak. Steve, it's always been a, a class ca category, 1600. Mm. 2 liter and under, 2 liter and over, 3 liter and over, and that's what the club cars and well, the old, what was called Victorian Road Registered Racing Association was when the rules were set down initially, and then club cars and improved production. There's always been those classes in there, and you're speaking to a bloke that ran in under 2 liter yes. for a long time and won this uh, event a number of times in, in under 2 liter, which is never lauded as much as outright, and that's the way it should be. The commitment to the race win is, uh, is always at the front of the field, but Definitely, uh, that is starting to swing in. The um, the XLs moving on to the Dunlop Dorenza, the same tyre as what the Toyota 86s are running there. So they're getting a, a pretty good deal from Dunlop on those as well. So we'll see them moving into. I think there's going to be a couple of or a, a, some sort of pseudo national rounds being run for XLs, but that that's sort of in the pipe works to be announced in the next month or so. But uh, certainly. The, uh, the XLs have dropped off their, their state level um, commitments in Victoria this month have dropped off massively, dramatically. And um, they have had various other longer distance races. There seems to be a, a rash of three and four hour races for XLs at Tail and Bend and all over the country. And and at, at Winton and various other tracks around the place as well. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's, um, it's a bit of strange to see. I was actually talking to, uh, to Larry Merrifield, who's in seventh place in the, uh, in the order at the moment. He's actually in a new car that he's breaking in for this weekend that he's purchased out of New South Wales. He actually formerly raced in the Hyundai XLs. Um, it was giving me a bit of an insight, just feeling like, yeah, there's a bit of, uh, I wouldn't say it's upheaval, but there's just a few competitors that are just looking at their options at the moment, deciding what they want to do. Still want to race, but uh, where they want to do their racing, I guess, is what it is. Now, Kevin Coulson, who's in the little white uh, Hyundai, uh, Honda Civic there, haven't seen him since about 2019, so it's good to have him back out there uh, racing in the, the number 87. They call that the devil's number if you're, uh, you're playing cricket. But uh, we're not playing cricket here, we're going motor racing. He's ahead of Glenn Boyd, who's uh, sort of just starting to find his way uh, in improved production. It was actually fairly quick here as uh, Coulson lets him up the inside at uh, probably one of the most daunting parts of the circuit, turn eight, uh, the old hay shed. It was still called the hay shed corner, but of course the, uh, the shed doesn't exist anymore off on the left-hand side. Uh, Glenn was very, very quick here at Phillip Island the last time out in September uh, and back here again for another crack just to see how quick uh, he can go. This particular car, 44 here, reminds me very much of Bruce Coombe and then Dean Cam, VH Commodore, which was a, a race winner in, uh, in club cars back in the day and has been recently rebuilt into a Group C trim by the guys at Tough Mounts in South Australia into a Group C looking car. But this one very much harks back to how Bruce ran it in, uh, in club cars right back in the day. And he's doing uh, other, other exploits in motor racing these days, but certainly uh, in, uh, in historic sports sedans, in fact. But um, this car, very synonymous with that, uh, that car of Coombe, that, uh, and, Coombe, and of course Dean Cam, who bought it off him and raced it successfully here in Victoria after it was uh, brought over from SA. And uh, just seeing that little Civic there, the under two litre, I guess, world of improved production racing has been dominated by Civics for the best part of eight or nine seasons now. And uh, of course, their poster boy, Jordan Cox, mm. talking about Ray Hislop and Jordan Cox, the battle that those two had at Mount Panorama. It's got to be 2016 around about there yep. when they did that. And um, that really rocketed Jordan Cox to, to start it, really. It absolutely did. That car now resides in the hands of Steve Zorpus in Victoria as well. We're hoping to have that back out on track next year. We're hoping we'll actually have 
a good handful of uh, under two litre cars next year. It's been something we've been a little bit devoid of in Victoria for a number of seasons now. New South Wales have had the stranglehold on it. They've actually had separate grids in improved production for both overs and unders because they've they have had, so many. They've done they've a really good job. Ever. They've done a really good job of it over the years. So hoping to boost the numbers this year. I'll yeah. put a big shout out to Bruce Woodward in a uh, Mark 1 Golf. Volkswagen Golf. Get him back out there as well. Might, uh, might get me a bit motivated to come and uh, show him the back of my car for another six or seven seasons. Big shout out to Bruce, who's a, uh, a fantastic competitor in under two litre. They've still got that car in the family. His son is still an avid supporter of the category, so it'd be good to see Bruce and James back at the racetrack with their uh, BWs. Here's the Merryweather car we were just talking about. Yep, Larry Merrifield is uh, uh, Merrifield. Merrifield. We've got to get that one right. I think I called it Merryweather when he was in XL. I as think well. you did as well. So this is a car that's come out in New South Wales. Uh, belonged to Matt Harris, who has raced a, a, a race or two down here in Victoria over the last couple of years. I think the last time we saw him in Victoria was a Sandown round, and he was still in a Honda Civic although a little bit sort of newer and a bit more of bodywork and some other, you know, go faster bits that were on it. Uh, but Larry's purchased that car, come over from the XLs. He's been around forever and a day. He's raced saloons, he's raced HQs. He's been racing in uh, grassroots racing for the better part of 25 years. So good to see that uh, he's made another switch and trying something a little bit different. Loves the club, loves the, uh, the category, sort of been following it for a while. And, Great to have him on board and great to have another two litre car coming into the 4A next year. This silhouette car, this RX-7, the most winning shape of car in club car and in... Uh, oh, oh man, no, Logan. Logan. That's at turn 10. He's gone for a wild ride. He looks like there's a big plume of smoke that's still hanging in the air out there as well. So I think he's torched a tyre going down the hill into MG Corner and gone off in a big way. Now, he'd already been passed by John Caligari as well a couple of corners ago. Has, uh, I don't think though, Merrifield wasn't quite close enough to pick up another spot, but is there damage on that car or is he just going to nurse it home from here uh, with a pretty badly torched tyre? Well, we were just looking uh, as well there through to the couple of the other contenders amongst the field there, and I was just saying that RX7 is the winningest shape in club car and improved production racing. It's been just up a little bit over the last uh, couple of years, sort of six or seven years, by some. GM and Ford product, but that particular shape, particularly in the 50k plate, is has got the absolute stranglehold, and we'll probably need another 20 years of winning for someone else, other shape to get anywhere near it. But uh, great to see Craig Spurs out there as well, representing that. Oh, oh, lock up a butcher! The Victorians are having a tremendous, tremendously bad second half in this race. Slides into it. Here's the, uh, I think the Matt Logan incident we might be about to see as uh, Butcher and McBride disappear into turn 10. And, oh yeah, that's a, big, that's a big lock up and actually did really well to avoid the gravel trap there because that will stop you in a hurry. And then it was a uh, you know, Tokyo drift style action in the grass. And Shows you how the wet circuit. it is, Steve, off, off the track mm. there, doesn't it? Well, we've got a fair amount of rain overnight too. So the circuit actually has been washed pretty green uh, overnight and still very, very slippery offline. But great job from Logan to control it. For Butcher, he's actually had some handling problems uh, throughout practice yesterday and qualifying today. It feels like the rear of the car is trying to overtake uh, the front of the car at certain points when you're trying to turn the car in. He doesn't look quite happy, but he's doing a good job to hang on to the back of McBrien. If it didn't say Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne across the top of the straight there, you could almost say, uh, welcome back to the British Touring Car Championship. A couple of BMWs fighting it out here for the preliminary to the Matthew Flinders plate from Prestige Hino here this weekend. And of course, the Traction Tire Centre in uh, in Roville. Big shout out to Andy McCarthy and all the guys down there that do just a ripping drop job. Not only for the competitors, but actually for Yokohama. They represent the brand so very, very well. And uh, it was some great work that was done by Ray Hislop that uh, unlocked the tyres in uh, for these guys. It was common knowledge or common perception that the tyres were good at 28 hot. And it was Ray that actually proved that they were better at 35 or 36 degrees when they're hot. So uh, he did some very much pioneering work and reported it back to uh, to Yokohama. Here's our race leader, an emphatic victory. And I'm getting a little bit sick of saying that about Adam Poole in, in this. He's, he, he just gets out in front and Max Demerit's been a, now a victim to it again. There's been many have been a victim to a, uh, a commanding victory 
to this magnificent race car. There's no other way to put it, is there, Steve? This thing is an absolute beautiful race car. It's a beautiful race car, and I think a lot of people would just say it is an absolute weapon. I think that's what it is. It, it is the cream of the improved production crop nationally in this country at the moment. Comfortable win for the national champion, Adam Poole. Car number one finishes position number one. Distant second for Max Demerick. That uh, margin actually came down at one point or another in the middle of the race. I wasn't quite sure why. I was looking for the reason why. It might have just been some lap traffic that uh, Poole was having to negotiate. Poole also had the big lock up. And he had the big the lock up at the top as well. Uh, but that, that margin got down to about two seconds, then it ballooned back out again. Demerick home in second. Lockie McBride home in third, just ahead of Andrew Butcher. They're garaged together, so they're uh, they're going to go back and have a bit of a debrief after that. And a great drive from uh, WA's John Caligari home in fifth place there as well after an early battle with Matt Logan. And we've got one of the XLs off. That looks like uh, Will Sala. I couldn't quite see where he was. He's on the back side of the circuit somewhere. It's like uh, the... White Honda slowing dramatically here in the... Oh, I actually think it's worse than that. I actually think Merrifield's actually had a bit of a, a problem because these guys That's have caught up to them because the last lap around for uh, for Merrifield was a 2.03.5, which is definitely not the pace that that car was running at. It was doing 49s in qualifying. I think he's nursing a problem to the flag here. Yep, caught that wrong there, but thank you, Steve. Pick me up on it. The 87 gets around there. Matt Logan eventually gets home there in the 43. Got some head scratching to do there for Matt Logan. He hasn't been out of a top four finishing position all year, Matt. Now he's uh, in sixth there. They'll do some uh, really big thinking. And I'm going to say he's got the weight of Victoria on his shoulders as well to uh, do that, as has uh, Andrew Butcher. He's got himself fourth. And uh, he gets home there ultimately. Kasperic's in the RX-7 in seventh. Place. Let's have a look at this on the last lap. Ooh, oh, that, that, Ferris and Logan. I was about to say, that, was that contact? But it doesn't look like there's any damage. I think maybe that might have been a misunderstanding between Casper uh, the Ghost, Craig Caspers, and Matt Logan. Yeah, Logan would have been coming through on the field there at that point in time. Oh, well, we'll, uh, we'll hear those war stories, I, I would suggest, right up until we start improved production race number two at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Formula Fords will be up next here at Island Magic 2023, brought to you by the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club. Piark to its mates, www.piark.com.au. Proof production, Formula Open, Sports Sedans, Formula V, Formula Ford, 944 Porsches, Formula uh, and historic touring cars. Lots of support from the Traction Tire Centre for the Yokohama Motorsport people. Ramada Resort, a solid Capri down there. Get a feed down with Eddie. Speco, SD Picks, Race Fuels for all the good juice for your racing car. Cool Drive, Scarcella, as well as Motorsport Australia and Phillip Island uh, race circuit here. Improved production cars for the Traction Tire Centre, Yokohama Tires, Matthew Flinders Plate. Formula Open Racing for the Victorian Road Racing Championship, the John Roxford Trophy. Porsches for the Assault Capri Endeavour Cup. Historic Touring Cars, the Pyre Victorian Historic Touring Car Trophy. Sports Sedans for Ramada Resort and the 50k Plate. Formula Ford and Formula Ford 1600 for the Phillip Island Challenge by Cool Drive and Formula V, Speco VHT, Phillip Island, Formula V Trophy. We're going to take a quick break because we have got coming for your delight. Formula Ford, just a couple of moments.
Island Magic 2023 got underway at around 10 to 1 this afternoon for racing. Of course, the gates open bright and early for qualifying. We had Porsche 944s on track for sports sedans, improved production. Then Formula Ford, Formula Ford 1600, the uh, older Kent engine class. And then historic touring cars, Formula V for their qualifying. And we had the first race for the weekend. Porsche 944, sports sedans have had their preliminary, as has improved production. Now the famous category, Formula Ford, rolls out onto the confines of the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Always look forward to seeing Formula Fords out there on the racetrack. And it is uh, Eddie Bezik. New South Wales that took the pole position in car number 30, the number 96 of Bailey Collins, whose dad's just uh, exited the track at the sports stand in the Jack Daniels Commodore. He is on the front row in position number two. Jack Bussey out of Queensland in the 74, out of position number three. Lockie Evanett, also the Queenslander there as well. So uh, a lot of pressure on Bailey Collins as far as being the Victorian, because next is Cody Maines Ruddy in the uh, Number five spot in car number 69, the 117 of Kyle Cotter, another New South Welshman, Liam Locano, New South Wales, and the number 43, the 97 of Oliver Locano, out of New South Wales as well. Paul Zinni, the Victorian, and Connor Nicholson, both those guys got the weight of the world on their shoulders to come through for Victoria. Then we go back to the Formula Ford 1600s, or the Kent engine cars, the front group being the Duratec more modern version of the Formula Ford. And then we go back to the Kent engine cars out of position number 15, Tom Kamaris. From New South Wales, Tim Hamilton out of Queensland, Peter Fitzgerald in the number 17. The Victorian, Craig Arnold, the Victorian in the number 90. Mark Zellner, great to see Mark out there in the Revolution race gear number 36. Top bloke, been around Victorian motorsport for a very long time. The Miguel SJ 010A. 01A, sorry, and uh, looking forward to seeing how Mark goes in number 36 there. Byron Lucci, Jared DePaul, Van DePaul, and we have Peter George, Phil Marinon in his Galloway Formula Ford 1600 FBHG5. Had to put a whole new column in the entry list there for the name of Phil's car, the Galloway Formula Ford 1600 FBHG5. And uh, Malcolm Coleman, cars already making their way down to the grid, they peel off Formula One style up into their position on the grid. And we get to have a good look before the field jumps away to uh, start a race one for the weekend. They've all done a brilliant job to get this far in season 2023, a full national series, full state series being run right across the gamut for the Formula Fords. And they are absolutely rip roaring, ready to go down there, bouncing off the uh, the rev limiters. And uh, they've done a tremendous job. Of course, Eddie Beswick qualified with a 137.82 in his Spectrum 014, and then Bailey Collins in the Spectrum 012. Another Spectrum, which was Jack Bussey. We are set for a start. Callum Brannigan has joined me here in the commentary booth. The guy that joins Formula Ford right across the state series. And we have a fantastic start. And it's the Fork Logic car that gets away nicely from the third row of the grid there. And that was Cody Maines Rutty. Welcome, Callum Brannigan. Good afternoon, Darren. Good afternoon, everybody tuning in around Australia and indeed the world race one of Formula Ford underway. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch my breath, Darren. Yeah, that was a great start there by Eddie Bezik. So, he's coming to the Formula Ford uh, from the last uh, few seasons. Of course, we've seen him making significant gains there in 2023 and 2024. significant steps forward in his racing career. But here comes Jack Bussey, all over the back of Bailey Collins, three wide coming into turn four. I love Formula Ford racing here at Phillip Island, Aaron. Just watching the uh, recovery crew, actually, they're picking up a bit of bodywork off the side of the track on the main straight here. They've sorted themselves out very nicely here indeed. And I tell you what, it has been a, uh, a massive season. Young Fossett taking the Victorian Championship.
Township. I haven't seen him here this week, and I guess having a rest and regathering some finance to take the next step in his career. But, boy, Formula Ford's jumped back real healthy straight out of the pandemic in the last uh, season and a half. They were certainly decimated over a couple of years when efforts to try and run the series just sort of fell foul and down the inside. Gain control here. That's the number 97. The darker of the Ford Logic cars because it's the white one in front. And that is the 97 of Oliver Lucano. And uh, that was a hairy run across the top of the hill. Two wheels off of the grass. It's wet. It's soggy out there. You do not want to put these Yokohama control tyres out there. Even though they are an all-weather tyre, it's not going to do you any good. You're just going to aquaplane out there. So they gather it up, and it's Collins that leads lap one. Three wide, though. Two wide, I should say, going into turn one. And now Jack Bussey, all the way down from Queensland, sends it around the outside, doing a sensational job. So here comes Bailey Collins. Can he return serve? Beautiful lines coming through turn two. We've got Spectrum one, two, three, and four, with Evanet bringing up the first. Miguel up in position five. Lloyd Kono in sixth position. Kyle Cotter in seventh position as well. So here they come to... Turn four once again. You can see through the heat haze, there's been some inclement weather uh, rolling through this part of the world throughout the morning. So you can see that it's baking hot out there once the, once the sun does decide to come through. And you can see the heat haze there as well. So drivers continuing to bring these Yokohama control tyres up to temperature. And here is a fantastic battle in the Kent uh, category as well, the 1600 Formula Ford. So we should point out that there are two classes of racing in Formula Ford around Australia, but it's getting very spirited at the head of the field. We've got four Spectrums, one, two, three, and four. Jack Bussey still leading the way in that number 74 car, and he's defending hard from Bailey Collins in position two. Now Cody Mayne's running there in position three, and Eddie Bezik starting off the front row, slipping back into position four, but the slipstream effect around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit is exaggerated, especially with these cars. They're very similar, or they're almost identical in terms of uh, aerodynamic makeup. The wind, the wind licked surfaces, I should say. So they've got a huge hole uh, punched in front of them in terms of uh, scoring a draft. And you can see here they're searching for that crucial path as they come in three wide into turn one. Jack Bussey around the outside, but he has to concede to Bailey Collins who takes it, takes the lead going into turn one. Cody Mains ruddy locks his chances around the outside as well, but we've got Eddie Bezik having a look up the inside. So Jack Bussey coming under fire from all angles with Lockie Ebenet in position five, just behind as well. The number 43 of Loi Kono as well. Fancies his chances uh, at trying to take some spoils here. So Bailey Collins now, he's got several car lengths up his sleeve in the number 96. Cody Mains ruddy sends it up the inside. Eddie Bezik tries to follow him through as well, but great slipstreaming racing for the Formula Fords. The opening race for Formula Ford here at the 2023 edition of Island Magic. A favourite event on the calendar for all competitors, especially state-based competitors in Victoria, and a lot of interstate travellers as well making the trek to Phillip Island for this lovely event. Now, this is, this is becoming six cars in the battle for the lead. Jack Bussey falling just behind. Eddie Bezik coming uh, through Lukey Heights. But Lockie Evanet, he's going to have a look up the inside, but he can't quite get it around this time. And he's compromised on exit as well, so that's not the fastest way through that particular part of the circuit. And he's going to come under fire from Loie Kono in the number 83, sorry, the 43 car just behind as they come onto the main straight once again. Now, slipstreaming the fact we were talking about that before. It's worth up to 10 kilometres per hour down the long straights around the Phillip Island, the fast-flowing Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. But they can hold each other up. So you can see that the car of Bailey Collins is leading the way, coming into turn one with Eddie Bezik now, charging up into position two with Cody Maines running in position three. And Jack Bussey looming just behind there in the spectrum there. He's got Jack Martin uh, in the garage throughout season 2023, supporting him and helping him develop and grow as a race car driver. Jack Martin, of course, has a huge uh, synergy, a huge history uh, with uh, Formula Ford uh, through his racing career. Uh, sorry, John Martin, I should say. Uh, apologies to John Martin for getting his name wrong just before, but a huge battle up the inside here. It's all crisscross there. Bailey Collins takes the inside line once again, and we've got some fluid coming out the back of the Cody Mains ruddy car as well. So that's the number 69 car sitting in position three. Eddie Bezik up into the lead now with Bailey Collins, who has won races throughout season 2023. 
and the liquid pouring out the back of uh, that mains runny car is getting a little bit more exaggerated. So here is Craig Arnold at the moment. He's leading the way from Lou Tulu. In, this is the battle, the effective battle for the Kent Honours, the 1600 class as well. Now Coleman's also featuring in the background there as well. Sending it up the inside, so Craig Arnold there concedes the lead for the class. But this battle will rage on with just over six minutes in this race remaining. Darren. Callum, it's always intriguing in Formula Ford racing and it's the, the battle of the chassis that we often talk about here in qualifying. It was the, the first three cars that were Spectrums and then a Miguel and that's kind of a little bit of a, I guess a change and a switch as we're just seeing, I uh, didn't catch who that was, but retiring and that's our uh, mains Ruddy, the one that uh, Callum just said was losing some fluid. So heading to the lane will take no further part. So. Um, that is, it is interesting. That's a bit of a change of uh, change of um, situation with the chassis here this weekend. The Spectrum dominating at the front. They've always been very handy around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. They're extremely slippery in a straight line, so they make up a lot of their pace down the long, flowing straights. Uh, not just here, but also uh, Sandan International Raceway, it should be pointed out, Darren. Um, but yeah, obviously, we haven't got the Sonic Miguels here this weekend. They've always been very strong at Phillip Island again. Bailey Collins up the inside of Eddie Bezik. I suspect this one will rage on with five minutes remaining in this race. But this is a spectacular battle from go to Owen. As I said before, Darren, Formula Ford racing at Phillip Island is always a spectacle. You see plenty of slip streaming and they're doing close to 240 kilometres per hour at the end of the main straight. And when you take into consideration that the uh, minimum ride height of these cars is just four centimetres off the ground. You're sitting pretty close to the ground, so you'll be feeling like you're doing a million miles an hour when you get to the end of the straight. But a wonderful technical package is Formula Ford. The perfect starting place for young carters coming in to circuit racing to commence their racing careers and the, uh, the honour list of drivers who got their start in Formula Ford and went on to massive things in Australian and international motorsport is uh, as long as the receipt with Darren going shopping at the local Woolworths. Exactly right. It certainly is that, and that's just in the meat aisle, Callum. I haven't even gone to the frozen veggies yet. But uh, certainly, they're just getting a good look at the Kent engine cars there. We were watching uh, Fitzgerald, Zellner, Lulu and Craig Arnold there and uh, Coleman as well in the number 52 back in the Ken Engine Cars. Malcolm Coleman there as well. But we're back at the race lead and we've got it in three now as uh, Jack Bussey, the Queenslander, weighs in in the ag car and uh, just sitting right on the back there. Watching the Queenslander trying pretty hard there. So Bussey in the number 74 started out of third drop back spot has now fought very hard over the last uh, lap to get back onto the back of these guys and the 88 running deep there does the joker lap not part of the formula ford series but uh maybe in moto gp and super bikes but uh drops a spot there so the 88 goes down to the the 43 there Lucano in the uh car that started out of seventh place the new south welshman the battle rages on at the head so eddie bezik Doing a brilliant job. The number 30 car coming through. Lukey Heights. Fast left-hander. A wonderful part of any racing circuit. Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Plus these cars. Always a, spectac uh, always a spectacle to behold. Jack Bussey there making up a little bit of ground on the back of Bailey Collins. So we'll get a good example of uh, the slipstreaming battle. So it's getting a little bit close here between Evan and who's in the number 88 car there. And he was just defending hard there from Lacono who was looking up behind him. So he just came a little bit unstuck. These cars do have adjustable brake bias, uh, but obviously seeing a Formula Ford in his mirror just unsettled him ever so slightly. And he took the MotoGP long penalty lap, unfortunately, but no harm, no foul. He's back out there and he's still circulating in position five. So he'll be ruining that mistake in that battle for position five. But have a go at these gaggle of spectrums at the field. One, two, and three. Mike Ballin and the team down there in Ballin Racing Developments will be rubbing their hands with glee at this one, Darren. Well, certainly they've got the uh, the field in development there. In fact, Paul Zitti is into the 10 now as well. So he's doing a tremendous job. The guy that has waved the Spectrum flag <coughs> very aggressively over a couple of decades now. And uh, great to see Paul out there. P8 in the road inside the top 10. He'd be happy with that, battling away with some of these younger drivers. Callum, you've been following the State Series and indeed the National Series for a number of years now. And... Uh, 
any Bezik, you know, like with, with young Fawcett running this year's championship, any Bezik really is the, the next one in line, if you like, that, that to, to move into that positioning, isn't he? Yeah, he's in the box seat and he's he's come a long way in his racing career, but he was pretty fast out of the box as well, it should be said. So plenty of testing miles under his belt and obviously nothing beats race experience, does it, Darren? Nothing beats getting behind the wheel and uh, racing your closest rivals as hard as you possibly can. Now, this is a great little battle as well back in the Kent field. So this is between Hamilton and Calamarcus. Uh, Our leader, these uh, are the leaders. Sorry, the, the leaders, Kent I should say. So uh, position nine and 10 outright, and they are behind Paul Zitti, who's a little bit further down the road. So I caught up with Paul very briefly during the week, who mentioned that with the uh, weather forecast looking a little bit bad in the lead up to this event, he wasn't hoping for the wet weather Weather, but uh, this is a great battle. So Tim Hamilton there in the black car leading the way uh, from Calamarcus just behind there. Daglo yellow highlights on that great Formula 4. Doesn't it look an absolute peach? Meanwhile, this battle rages on. The position, uh, the battle for the lead. And we've got Jack Bussey sitting there in position too. But just to cap off what we were talking before uh, about before, Darren, with uh, Eddie Bezik. Jack Bussey as well, he's a big mover and shaker in Formula 4, along with Bailey Collins as well. So these guys uh, and girls as well, everyone you see racing in Victorian and Australian Formula 4, they are the stars of tomorrow. So you'll We're see seeing them. a real snapshot here, I'm going oh, right now. 100%. And yeah, these will be the names of tomorrow. So uh, write them down in your book, pretend like you knew them before they were famous and cool because they got their start here in Formula 4 and no doubt they're going to go on to bigger and better things in Australian and potentially international motorsport there as uh, Bailey Collins brings up a little bit of dust there as he uh, searches all areas of the track. Now, Calamarcus has made his way into the effective lead, uh, so effective lead, the lead of the uh, Kent category as well. So I dare say this will be the final lap of the race as well, Darren. He's an alumni of Australian motorsport and the winners of the Phillip Island Formula Ford trophy in both Vic, Vic Champs uh, trim and um, in the uh, Island Magic trim, starting back in 1992. Cameron Prince, Ash Kutchie, Dean Lindstrom, Scott March, Adam Macro, Ross Ocapinti, Luke Hilton, Bathurst winner. Marcus Marshall, Mark Winterbottom, Supercars Championship Bathurst winner. Tony Delberto won TCR for the last two years in a row. Shane Price, Taz Douglas. Um, John Martin, you've touched on him coaching these guys. Chas Mostert, Brett Francis. Scotty Andrews, an international career now. Gary Jacobson's had a career in supercars. Um, and the list just goes on. Brett Francis, Adrian Lazaro, Cade Southall, Nick Rowe, Jordan Boys, Brendan Jones, Will Brown in 2016, a young Will Brown. 2016, only eight years ago, and he won here. And this Hamish Trabaras, Angela Mazaras, Josh Bucken, who's just won the uh, TCR Championship. Cody Donald, Richard Davison, who's uh, a young, young, young bloke you might want to watch out for. Uh, Absolutely. Young Richard Davison, here's the battle for the lead. Now, this is the last lap of the race. They've got Phil Marinon. He is the category administrator for Formula Ford in Australia. He's in that beautiful Galloway just ahead. He's going to steer well clear of this battle. He's a little bit over to the left-hand side there, but he'll get the message from these young chargers. As <laughs> they'll be sending a Morse code if he doesn't. <laughs> he'll send him, they'll send him an invoice after the race. But here comes Jack Bussey. He's all over the back of Eddie Bezik. And we've got Bailey Collins in the background as well. They've su successfully navigated the lap traffic in the form of Phil Marinon. Very wisely getting out of the way of the battle for the lead here. They've only got a handful of corners remaining in this race, but Eddie Bezik is in the box seat. He's got just over a Spectrum's car length between himself and Jack Bussey. But Bailey Collins fancies his chances at a slipstream uh, challenge for the chequered flag. Now, I dare say Eddie Bezik has just enough space, just enough time up his sleeve here to bring it home and take out the opening race of the weekend for Formula Ford here at Island Magic and he does indeed he comes across the line he takes out race one Jack Bussey in position two Bailey Collins home in position three Phil Marinon across the line there in the Galloway and <laughs> waving to his combatant Kyle Cotter in the 117 waves to Locono as they go across the start finish line there that's the battle for position four Meanwhile, on track here, this uh, on screen, I should say, at the moment, this is Tim Hamilton in the number 87 entry. Class A, the 1600 Kent category. That is a beautiful looking Spectrum 010. Look how svelte, low, beautifully presented this number 87 entry is. Slightly different engine note as well, coming from the, uh, the old Cortina uh, carbureted 1600cc. Uh, Kent engine cast is coming on to the main straight, the number 87. He's going to do it nice and easily. Callum Marcus there took the challenge to him. 
and he's dropped off the pace ever so slightly, so, so apologies for missing that one, but Tim Hamilton extremely happy with that one as he punches the air. Coming across the line there to take out race one uh, of the Kent class for Formula Ford. It's good to see so many Kent cars actually turning out for Isle of Magic this weekend. Uh, a rather pragmatic move from the Formula Ford Association. A couple of years ago, back in 2014, it's almost, almost a decade ago, uh, ago now, Darren, but uh, a huge, uh, a wonderful effort from the uh, FFA to reintroduce Kent cars back into states, or sorry, promote them back into national level uh, competition, which only enhances uh, and encourages Kent, people who own Kent cars in the garages to get them out for these uh, spectacular state level meetings as well. So wonderful race from the entire Formula Ford field there. No safety cars, just hard racing. Beautiful stuff there, Darren. Thank you very much, Callum, for stepping in for the Formula Ford. It's always great to get the inside running from a bloke that treasures his time within this uh, fantastic category over uh, 60 years of racing with Formula Ford and uh, Callum Brannigan has plenty of other duties to look after in the broadcast here. So Eddie Bezik takes the chocolates in race number one for Cool Drive this weekend to Jack Bussey and Bailey Collars. Kyle Cotter, great result there in position number four. Liam Lucano, good one there as well. Started out of, well, out of the uh, top five and into the five. Lachlan Emmett, Oliver Lucano. Then we have Paul City. Tim Hamilton, Thomas Kolmikas there as well. Jack Bussey getting the fastest lap of the race there as well. We've got plenty of racing still to come. Historic touring cars are on track next. Formula B and then Formula Open rounding out the first day of Island Magic 2023. Brought to you by the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club or Pyre to its mates. Big shout out to Jack Dunn from Line Media. Joining us all the way from Darwin. Welcome to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit, Jack.
Plenty of racing to go here at Isle of Magic 2023, the 33rd year in a row this event has been run on this weekend and it's a massive celebration at the end of every season as Brett Ramsey from the In Pit Lane show says it's schoolies for the race car drivers here at Phillip Island, the uh, summertime resort town of Cowes, not too far away and uh, is famous at this time of the year for those end of year 12 kids to come and celebrate, let their hair down after uh, 12 years of schooling. And it's kind of like that for the race car drivers as well. A big, long season. And we've enjoyed a couple of seasons, nice long seasons now post the, uh, the COVID generation. And uh, a lot of them come down here to celebrate. This is our biggest field for the weekend and somewhat fitting the historic touring cars to have this uh, massive field and a big congratulations to the historic touring car group of uh, competitors for bringing on such a, a great uh, field of, of race cars. Really good to see all these magnificent uh, race cars that just keep racing and racing really, really hard as well. Doing it for the uh, Victorian Historic Touring Car Trophy. The trophy was inaugurated in 1991 in view of the strong growth. And following for this fantastic class, which at the time didn't have a landmark event to aim for anywhere in the country. This event, event should give Ford some heart. As 14 of the 27 times have been conducted, it's been won by a Mustang or a Falcon. The other two being Henry Draper and Ted Brewster in the Minis in 1995. Kent Yulden in the Monaro. Did a brilliant job. And Trevor Talbot in the XU1. Rob Braun in his Charger. Darren Collins a couple of times in 2014 and 2015. Paul Stubber came over here and entertained us beautifully in 2015. Dean Neville, the late Dean Neville in 2016. 2018, Aldo DiPolo in his Chevy Camaros. And uh, we have got a great field making their way out on track for our delight now. Craig Allen will start out of uh, P1, car number 31, entered under Paul Stubber. We're just hearing reports that the 97 there, Darren Collins, who we've known for many seasons racing the Camaro now in a Mustang, has got, they're just checking it out for a, uh, a leak coming out of it. Ella DiPolo out of WA, who has also won this, uh, as I said, in the past this event, Darren Collins. We're just looking at him in the 97. Michael Vicelli in the number 69. Always great to see Michael going racing. Ian Muir, the Queenslander. Big welcome to him. Brent Trengove, who has been very fast in the state rounds we've seen this year. Andrew Williams in the Giant Slayer. The 59, the Blue Tirana LJ XU1. Always great to see him there and he is waving the flag for Victoria and indeed the locals here within the PIARC organisation as well there. And it's Adrian Moyle, Andrew Beard in the 86. Darren Hossack, one two-time national champion, won the 50k plate here. He starts out of 11th place in car number 18, the RX2. We go back to the 48 and it's Glenn Miles, Brett Ferris, Jeff Monday, Ray Hepburn, Peter Mulliman, a long way down for car number 43. Watch for him out of position 17. Stephen Pillickers with Jen Dahlstrom, Will, Bill Trengove, then we go back to Richard Hill, Brett Hodgkin, Leo Tobin. Boy, watch for the number 46. Where is that? Leo Tobin down there in the, uh, the 46. That is the uh, Ford Mustang from Davidson Race Engines. Keep an eye out for that one as well. Jervis Ward. It's great to see Jervis. We saw him down here in the last round of the State Series in his Falcon Sprint. A magnificent looking car and very, very well presented. Nathan Gordon to Les Walmsley. Then we've got John Harrison, Michael George. Great to see Mike out there as well. John Clark, Tony Hubbard. Tony Hubbard down there in car number 24, which is the Chevy Camaro and Reese Moyle. Massive field of historic tours. Big shout out to Darren Knight. We know you're watching at home for just cars. Should have been here to call this race. But uh, historic touring cars on the grid will do the best we can. And on the uh, pole position, is Craig Allen, number 15, beautiful black, green and white detailed Mustang right next to him, Paul Stubber in the number 31. And cannot wait to see this race. Stubber, a fantastic entertainer, gets out beautifully off the start there. 
Michael Michelli absolutely gazumped as he charges down there as well. So he's just been passed by about three or four cars. So Michelli going backwards. Brett Trengo, Peter Niven pushing through there as well. There is Darren Hossack in the 18. And he's got McNiven as well all over the back of him. There's Michelli gathering it all up there. The 97 of Collins drops back a spot there. Started out, sorry, started out of fourth, stays fourth. Out uh, to follow there as well. As they all come out of turn two. A great shot here on the uh, scaffolding out of turn two. Gives you a good shot to see the cars there. You go the head on shot down into turn four. And it is Brett Trengove in the number 22. There's Michelli. There's the 59 there of Andrew Williams doing a beautiful job. The 13 of Peter McNiven out of uh, Currumburra. Or is it Liam Gatha? I think it's Liam Gatha actually. Um, Adrian Moyle in there as well. The 16 coming through. A lot of work has to be done here by Glenn Miles. This is one of the fastest charges in history. Let's watch for Glenn. Started out of 13th. Looks to be pushing pretty hard to get through, but he's got a GTHO and a Camaro behind him. That's number uh, 68 there of Jeff Monday. And the 48 coming through there as well. So we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye out for the 48 there as well. So there's the 68 just going wide, losing some time there. That's a, a lot, a big, a lot of loss of time there as well. So that's Jeff Monday. Glenn Miles taking advantage of that. As they come around to complete the lap number one, Paul Stubber up one spot, started out at two. He's got himself a 2.1, 2.6 second start. If you want to learn about Paul Stubber's background, check out the Grassroots Racing Podcast, a very entertaining chat with Gary O'Brien. Race Fuels Grassroots Racing Podcast with uh, Paul Stubber. Has a really good chat and uh, colours in the story around that race. A fantastic guy to watch out on track as we get a good look at the RX2s. Oh, this is uh, one of our front running cars. Is that in fact the car off the second row? That Mustang there slowing Andy. Andy Williams, it was, uh, it was Darren Collins off the second row of the grid, slowing down there. Andy Williams and Darren Hossack, two of the Victorians here fighting it out. Darren Hossack goes to the inside on the 59 and gets it done. He's now out after Michael Michelli. Andy Williams is not giving up. He's got the inside running at Siberia. Darren Hossack has to go the wide way around, lifting a leg. Looks like a puppy in your backyard going for a wee, lifting a foot up off the ground. And there is Darren Collins. That's a shame. He's waving for fireys. He definitely needs a fiery down there. There is orange flames belching out of the front of that car. He's thrown the wheel out over there as well. So we will be having fire marshals activated from somewhere. We'll keep an eye on that there as well. So um, that's not looking good. There's a fire vehicle and a rescue vehicle leaving pit lane now. But uh, we go back to the front of the field here. That's, uh, Paul Stubber in the yellow car. Then we've got uh, Pioli. There is the 97 stricken in the grass. He knew it was happening too. Got right out of the way and parked it up. Darren got out of the car. So we look down into turn number one now. This is the uh, 996 of Pioli. And uh, the 15 that started off pole position of Craig Allen. We're actually seeing Craig Allen scored right down, so there is a, a timing glitch for Craig, but he is certainly sitting there in P2. Fire is making their way down to um, where Darren Collins is, and they're arriving at the scene. It doesn't look like the fire has taken too much more of a hold down there, but um, certainly that was not a good look. So the race continues on. We'll pick up with Paul Stubber and just see how his race is proceeding in car number 31. Doing a terrific job. There he is. This guy set this track alight in about 2016 as a support category. I think it was, no, it was even earlier than that, about 2012, the Bianchi historic touring cars, and he was absolutely amazing. He's driven away in, uh, in only two laps to a four and a half second lead. And uh, there is Craig Allen. 
second on the road. If you're watching the timing, it shows him not classified. So he is actually there in the race. So he must have a, a timing glitch. Here's the big battle pack. And it is Michelli. He looks down the inside. That's the number 69. Then we go to the 55. It's a big push there. That's Mewitt. He started out of position number six. Mewitt now just drops back a spot now to Michelli. Andy Williams all over the back now. Have a look at Darren Hossack. Lights ablaze in that little RX2. And he is already entrenched inside the top ten. Absolutely wringing the neck of that little 12A. About 1300 cc of swept volume at his disposal. Up against six litres. You'll just see the Camaro going past there. So Darren is using everything that he's got inside his helmet and his hands and feet to get this battle. Andy Williams locking up there. Almost went into the back of Mewitt. And Michelli in that magnificent boss Mustang always looks the goods. Gee, it's hard to pick these two apart. Michelli and Mewitt. But Andy Williams, have a look at that GDR XU1. He absolutely prepares this XU1 magnificently. Won a race at Tail and Bend a, a little while ago in this car, in this category does a brilliant, brilliant job. Darren Hossack in the back there. And then uh, in front of Hossack, is that Moyle that's gone through? Yes, it will be in the number 25. Adrian Moyle comes on through there in the Chevy Camaro. In fact, Darren's got him back yeah, around the tight, twisty section around through turns four, five and six. He just loses out with capacity on the main straight. Have a look at this. You're in an RX2 and you've got this Mustang behind you, and you've got your maiden number 13, the other one of the RS2s, Peter McNibbon. The Victorian there as well. Just looking for Joe Kalia. Joe Kalia was entered here this weekend as well, but it doesn't look like he's made it out onto track here, so that's a, that's a shame. Joe's got that magnificent looking Mustang out there. He's probably over in Adelaide supporting his great mate John Bauer in his last appearance in the Touring Car Masters series over there. But McNiven now all over the back. And last time round, Darren Hossack relinquished the spot to the charging black and silver Mustang. It could happen again. Whoa, Michelli locks it up down at turn one there. Sorry, that's not Michelli. That's the uh, Mewitt car. Mewitt car. Michelli's the one just in front there, the 69. And just behind now, so whatever he did at turn one, locked it up there. Here's the 96, just on the threshold of breaking there. Well, the 996 of Aldo to Pioli, and he has got Craig Allen, and these two have both got a handful underneath them here. Camaro versus Mustang. Where are we? On the streets of Adelaide or at Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit? Everything old is new again. We've got the original version here, trackside at Island Magic. Camaro and Mustang. For what would have been the Australian Touring Car Championship back in the day. Live pictures now. Everything old is new again. Camaro, Mustang across the top of Lukey Heights. The Mustang slides beautifully, takes a spot. Beautiful driving there by Craig Allen. Takes back P2 on the road. Stubber now, 3.2 seconds away out in front of these two. The number 15, magnificently turned out Mustang, just puts the 996 of Pioli back in the mirrors a little bit further back. Of course, uh, trying to pick up Pioli's won this, uh, um, Aldo Pioli in 2018, has won the uh, Victorian Historic Touring Car Trophy, so knows how to do it. Paul Stubber won it last year. He uh, is leading for all intents and purposes, leaning the preliminary race now by five and a half seconds in the yellow Camaro and uh, looking magnificent in the process. Storming down the straight. There's the number 59 of Andy Williams. And he never says die. While he's got fire under the the bonnet he is chasing. Probably shouldn't say that now that we've uh, watched Darren Collins' car with actual fire coming out, but Andy Williams doing a terrific job. And 
the 22 big breaks there. That's Brett Trengove doing a nice job. Started out a seventh. The, uh, the Victorian knows his way around here well. McNiven has now gone through on Hossack. So uh, so has the uh, the black and uh, sorry black and silver Mustang. So not sure what's happened there. Hossack is uh, doesn't seem to have the impetus that he had earlier on in this race. The car appears to be slowing a little bit there. So no telltales about the car. Just doesn't look as fast on the track. There's the 96. Got that 996. Sorry, back again. The Western Australian. So at the moment there is a Western Australian leading the way to a Queenslander. Then uh, another Western Australian, Brett Trengove, the first of the Victorians, and it's Michelli Williams Mewitt is a uh, Queenslander, or Mewitt is a Queenslander. The 25 Doyle is uh, Adrian Doyle, he's a Victorian as they come down now and uh, start to lap the uh, less capacity cars. And sliding through turn one there, the Camaro there being Absolutely wheeled beautifully there. The 996 of Aldo De Poli. Magnificent looking racing car. These things, you stand next to them and they've got a soul, got a racing beat about them. They just want to get out there and be driven hard. Really do. You get down to the Group N paddock or NC or the historic touring car paddock, the Just Cars paddock, and uh, cast your eyes over this car. Big lock up there for Craig Allen. He doesn't want to do that too many more times here we go this is Jervis Ward started out of 26 where has Jervis come up to he's made his way up into 19th doing a brilliant job there so he's come charging through Mike George in the uh, 63 has done a good job too he's coming through just update the timing sheet so Jervis is uh, in 19th with uh, Hill right in behind there, and that's the Mini, the Richard Hill in the number 12 Mini. Morris Cooper S, there it is, look at that. Teddy Brewster won a number of these races going back in history in a, a Mini not too different to that. No, 2002, Teddy Brewster won this uh, race, the historic touring car trophy. What a legend of Victorian motorsport and a lovely bloke. Really nice fella, you don't waste a minute of time with uh, Ted. He's got uh, so much knowledge and done so many things in Australian motorsport. This is uh, the number 12 though of Richard Hill. And uh, Richard has just got Jervis Ward in that magnificent looking Falcon sprint. Oh no, down at turn one. That is the 996 of Aldo Pioli. He will be race reaching for the dry cleaning after this one that was a massive off down there not too sure what happened there but uh, appeared right of shot and before you could say left of shot he was across it and into that gravel trap years ago that would have ended up in a very nasty demise down there but the uh, the gravel trap arrests you you've got the hard stand there as well now so if uh, you can Try and slow the car down. This is our race leader, Paul Stubber. He is uh, poised, I would suggest, to take the checkered flag. Checkered flag is with our officials down there at the start line. Here we go, down the straight. Lock up on right front. Couldn't turn it in. 996 goes off at a rapid rate of knots. No lock ups there. Steering it through. I got this, I got this, I got this. Did someone say autocross? As we go to Paul Stubber bringing the uh, yellow Camaro around. He told us great stories about this car on the Grassroots Racing Podcast at Speed Cafe these days. Check it out as Paul Stubber comes around onto the straight here. He's got over five and a half seconds lead on Aldo Pioli. In fact, Aldo have gone back a spot. Craig Allen will have taken that second spot on the road. There he is, Paul Stubber. Takes a race one for the weekend in the historic touring cars. There's Allen across the line. Ultimately, five seconds, the gap there. This is a big battle. This is raging because the 996 went off and Brett Trengove has taken P3. It's a drag race, an out and out drag race. Two Chevys line right next to each other. It's Trengove that takes it out over Aldo Pioli 
and it's by 0 0.006 of a second. That has got to be the closest finishing margin for season 2023. We've had a couple of close ones. Pioli, then Michelli, Muir out of Queensland, Andy Williams ultimately home in seventh. Moyle, let's have a look. Adrian started out of P9, comes home in eighth. Peter McNiven started out of the tenth, comes home in ninth. Darren Hossack home in tenth. Darren started out of 11. He was up as far as eighth, but was ailing in the latter part of that race. Then it's Miles. Watch for uh, Glenn in the number 16 charger. Hodgson, Monday, Ferris and Muleman. The number 43 of Peter Muleman started out of 17th, got up to 15th bed. Pillikers in the uh, number 14. Good to see Stephen Pillikers uh, out there and doing it again as well. Number 14 started out at 20, finished well inside the top 20. Beautiful cars just motoring their way back in through the uh, turn four exit road. Next race on track will be the Formula Vs as the cars still storming across the line here. The historic touring cars race one for the weekend. And uh, there it is, Paul Stubber confirmed as our uh, race winner. And uh, rightfully so in that magnificent yellow Camaro drives it like it's not his <laughs> and uh, really does give us a massive amount of entertainment. The Assault of Capri Restaurant and Takeaway presenting the historic touring cars here this weekend. Outside the 10, Miles Hodgkin Monday rounds them out there as well. Back to uh, Michael George out of 24. Good to see Mike back at the track. Aldo to goalie and uh, some non finishes there. We'll try and chase down Darren Collins and uh, let's see if the fire hasn't caused too much damage to that car and it can be brought back for racing tomorrow. We'll take a quick break here trackside at the 2023 version of Island Magic brought to us by the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club. We'll be back in just a couple of moments with Formula B. Short, sharp break here at Island Magic 2023. Formula V's on track, and we have the luxury of the guy that has been calling the State Series Formula V's for numerous seasons now, joining us back here in the commentary booth. Welcome back, Steve DeVries. Uh, you are full bottle on all of these Formula V's. In fact, you probably don't even need the grid sheet. You can just feel it flowing through your veins where they're all sitting out on track at the moment. Oh, it's getting very, very close, Darren. Good afternoon again, everybody. This is a very, very big occasion for Formula V. It is not only the biggest field of cars here this weekend, it is a national Formula V event. The Australian Series is also on the line. There's three people that could possibly win it. There is also some permutations in the Formula V Victorian Club Championship at play. And of course, we are honouring the late, great Brian Sambo Sampson, who was a proud sponsor of uh, Formula V since 2009 with the uh, Speco and VHT. And we're racing with uh, memorial stickers on all the Vs in his honour this weekend. So there's been a little bit of a change here. I'm just having a bit of a look through the order that uh, Jake Rowe's been uh, placed on pole position at 61 there, but I think that's actually an error. I think that's actually meant to be Reef McCarthy's name there, not Jake Rowe's name aboard the 61. So a little bit of an issue going on there. Um, and there's been a, a few drivers that have got the, the wrong names on them. So running through the grid order, it's Reef McCarthy who's going to be on pole in the Beecham number 61 from Heath Collinson. 
Then next door on the, uh, on the next row is Michael Kinsella, who is your current two-time uh, defending National Challenge champion, ahead of the state champion from Queensland for this year, Alex McDonald. Curtis Porter in fifth place, also out of Queensland, followed by Jake Rowe in the 66. Then you've got Daniel Reynolds from Ace, the ACT and Lee Partridge. Rounding out the top 10, Nick Jones and Andre Curran. There is such a big long field of names. Let's just rattle them off as they go from 11th all the way through. So Brandon Taylor and David Kaisley, both from WA, come next. Ash Clifford from Victoria. Brody Nunn from Queensland. Damien Spinello and Darren Power. Rod Lisson from WA. Claudia Lennox is the first of the four ladies here this weekend. She starts out of 18th. Ed Lawrence, Malachi Windsor. Then going back to Paul Maltoni. Gavin Stubbs, Charlie Richardson, Ken Philby. Great to have Ken back in the field. It's been a couple of years since we've had him fly down from Queensland. Mick Fisher, Mark Moran, Danny Chero, he's from WA, Michael Westerhout from Queensland, and then the last of the, uh, the cars, the last eight, Rocco Spinley, Sean McKenzie, Kelly Egan, Kenneth Ray, Franz Estebauer, Kathy Lisson, Cameron Bell, Gregory Johnston, and Brock Hamilton is the last car on the grid. What a list of names. There is some great depth in this field, Darren. I'm a little bit biased. I'm a little bit jealous because I think we're going to be in for a cracking trophy race tomorrow afternoon with the amount of drivers, the quality that's in this field. But first, we've got to get through two preliminaries. I was going to say, don't undersell this race uh, too much, Steve, because uh, they're going to want to make sure they're still at the front end of the field to get mm. that uh, main race, the Mori Fordham Memorial Trophy later on tomorrow afternoon so what a field as far as we can see up under the melbourne 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 sign and uh, right the way down to the australia melbourne sign at the start of the grid steve this is going to be an absolute ripper and i'm going to let you have some room to breathe here and see if you can get through the first couple of laps with uh, just breathing through your ears well let's see how we go Two men on the front row that had know how this goes. They've got six of the last seven or eight Maury Fordham trophies between them. Reef McCarthy's been married to it for the last four years. Heath Collinson won it back to back in 2015 and 2016. They know how this works. They get the jump off the front row and we are away for preliminary one for Spec VHT. Jake Rose had a terrible start from the third row of the grid. He's looking for a second gear. The car number 66 is not going anywhere and he is sinking through Thank the field. he got moving there, Steve. He uh, was a sitting duck when he was sitting still. He's managed to get some sort of motion, but uh, that was lucky. It gave the field an opportunity to stream around him. Absolutely. Very, very lucky. Formula 4 uh, cars compared to Formula V cars. There's a very, very big difference in terms of the width of the car, so there was a lot more real estate on the track for drivers to get around him, with these cars being much, much more narrow than their bigger brother, the, uh, the Formula Ford, of course, with a different engine in the back, not a Formula uh, VW engine in the back. None Nonetheless, the whole field is on their way. There go the birds. They're getting a good scaring from all the, uh, the big Formula Vs uh, running down towards turn number four. Three wide in some cases. And McCarthy holding sway for the moment over Collinson. And then the next two, which was Michael Kinsella in third place. And it looks like Curtis Porter's made a move too. He's made up one extra spot at the expense of Alex McDonald. Lee and Partridge just jumped up a couple of spots off the start there as well. Started out of eighth. He's now uh, fighting up for fifth on the road here as well. So the Victorian, who has been very fast over the last couple of rounds, has found his way through the first half a lap nicely. Actually, I called that one incorrectly as well. It looks like Curtis Porter's actually lost two spots there. So he started out of fifth. Looks like he's gone back to seventh. And that was at the expense of Partridge coming through. A couple of similarly lived cars in the field a little bit difficult to spot at a distance Jim Partridge now into fourth place made a nice move under brakes down into uh, MG the first time there I would suggest that his um, foray forward might stop at this point there's an old rule in uh, Formula V racing. You don't want to lead until you actually get the check flag hit you on the nose. That's exactly right. Now, McCarthy and, uh, has had the gauntlet thrown down to him in the last couple of state rounds as well by the likes of Lee Partridge at Calder last time out, by the likes of Nick Jones last time here at Phillip Island. So he hasn't had it all his own way. So I think what... Partridge and uh, Jones have sort of worked out is they've got to sort of strike early and I think a few of the uh, the Formula V drivers that are here from interstate are starting to realise that they probably need to strike early and follow that sort of similar lead if they want any chance of finishing at the pointy end of the field just like Michael Kinsella's done he's gone through there on Alex McDonald into second place and this is the big game of chess that happens there's going to be a lot of change happen over the course of the next seven or eight laps and there's already a nice little breakaway group here. Looks like it's six cars heading down into turn number four. 
The last of those cars in the queue is the Checkmate, number 78 there, which is actually piloted by Daniel Reynolds. We haven't uh, seen him for a couple of years. Very used, much used to seeing him in a, an orange and black Sabre 02. Uh, he's now at the helm of Paul Corcoran's uh, Checkmate, doing a nice job there in sixth place. As all 37 of these Formula V cars stream through turn number four. Little battle groups going on there. Big lock up for the number 24. Going down there into turn number four as well. Just looking to see who that one was. In a few seconds, Ray that was Kenneth Ray. Chaser. Yep, there you go. And the last of those cars on the road is actually Greg Johnston in the, uh, the 1200 class. There's only one or two of them here this weekend. Greg Johnston's actually secured the, uh, the National Series uh, title with the, by virtue of Stephen Butcher uh, not making it here this weekend. Big thanks to Stephen Butcher as well for updating the Australian Series points for us throughout the weekend. We'll be able to bring you all the permutations with that one. But, has uh, Kinsella gone through into the league? I think he has. Yes, he has. Yes, too. Well, gone through in the last half a lap or so there. So, well, 35 leading the way there. And this is the permutations of a Formula V race just starting to take out. They've all read the script. One Laps one and two, we do this. By the end of lap two, we'll all start to fan out and uh, we'll start to see how the train lines up. I do like the fact that uh, the Sabre that is now one, two, three, four, five on the road is a Sabre, but is also known as Sophie. Yes, and everybody's sort of got a little bit of a nickname for their car, they I do. think. I looked in the uh, the entry list, there's some that have called them L, and uh, in the case of uh, some of the Jaces, I think there was one from Rob Vile calls his Heidi. They've all got, it's almost like Jamie Wincup, they've taken after him when he called his car, was it Kate, I think, back in yeah, the day, the, the, the championship Kate, winning Kate. Winning, winning for sure, but uh, I like that. Lee, Lee Partridge has got a pretty zany kind of livery on that car. Uh, yeah, a great bloke that runs uh, operations down there at MPC, but, uh, or whatever it's called, MPC Autosport now, is emblazoned on the side of his Sabre mm -hmm. and uh, does a, yeah, a terrific job. Runs the Molecule products, so he always smells fresh. He's always got the, the nice Molecule spray in the driving suit, so uh, he's a big advocate for that product. He certainly is. A couple of battle groups starting to pair off here. So we talked about the top half a dozen drivers. Then there's about another group of four or five after that. And then Nick Jones, you were just, sorry, David Kaisley, you were just pointing there. He's actually yeah. set the fastest lap of the race so far from Western Australia. So he's in ninth place in the uh, the number 807, 153.8. Actually, Steve, there. Kaisley and Jones. Kaisley setting the fastest lap. But Jones last time here was a race winner. He was. And now he's down in position 10. Just amazing to see how the script sort of changes and I know that there's been a, a car change for Nick Jones in the last two rounds. He was in a, a different car here at, uh, at Phillip Island as he looked to the number 96 of Claudia Lennox. Going down the inside there of one of the uh, the interstate competitors. Looks like that's that uh, car number 50 Brody Nunn out of Queensland. Nick Jones was actually piloting a slightly different Sabre 02 last time he was here. He's jumped into Mark Mitchell's car the last two rounds and it doesn't feel like it's quite been the same. So I'm not putting it solely down to just cars just yet. They are the same sort of make and model of car, but just a few different little things that uh, might be different between the two cars. There goes Nick Jones, that uh, green and blue machine just disappearing into the bottom of the shot. Cars fanning out all over the track here outside the top 10 there as well. Now we just touched on Claudia Lennox and this is uh, 20, 21, 22, 23 up to 26 we're looking at now. So there's the World Championship for Formula B is going on in about three or four different battle packs within the top 20 cars. We've had 37 start the weekend and uh, this is just a brilliant turnout for Formula B. This is a fantastic turnout. One of the biggest fields we've seen since the, uh, the on the mainland here in Victoria since the uh, the National Challenge last year up at Winton, which was won by Michael Kinsella, who's the third car in the train there. He then went down to Baskerville uh, just a couple of weeks ago and defended that title. So he's a two-time uh, defending champion. He's won that uh, four times now, the National Challenge. And then it was uh, Jeremy Dwyer in the 1200 class uh, taking a win down there in, uh, in Tasmania for the National Challenge as well. So plenty of these drivers are on their way home from National Challenge, stopping off at Phillip Island uh, for a last minute run before heading back across to Western Australia or back to New South Wales, wherever they've travelled from. In the case of the Western Australians and uh, a couple of from Queensland, they've actually hired a truck to bring them all down specifically for this event. They were targeting last year, I was talking to the club president, Mark Moran from Queensland uh, earlier this morning, they were looking to bring you know several cars down last year but just circumstances didn't go their way a couple of mechanical failures in the, the round prior just sort of called them having to cancel it off and uh, they've managed to get down this year so it's great to have 
good representation from you know four states: West Australia, Queensland, uh, WA, uh, sorry, New South Wales, and Victoria, making up the 37. As Brody Nunn's having a little bit of a look on the inside of uh, Darren Power in the 44 here at the final corner in this little battle group that uh, we've been watching for the last half a, a lap or so. Darren Power having switched over to the Acura Motorsport stable with uh, his Jaser chassis in the last couple of rounds. So it's good to see getting a bit of support from the team down there. Another change for the lead here up the front. So McCarthy's gone back to the head of the queue. Tucked in behind him is the number 78 there. And then third in the queue, Michael Kinsella. So down the inside now comes Daniel Reynolds. He's won this title uh, a couple of once or twice before, I believe. And it was all the way back in 2011 for Daniel Reynolds. So a long time between drinks for him for Maury Fordham trophies. Started back in 1991. Uh, first awarded to Warwick Manderson. He took the first two of them out. And uh, Frank Hare was the one that uh, was the benchmark with three of them until Reef McCarthy equaled him in 2021 and then went one better and stands alone with four of the Maury Fordham trophies, the last four consecutive to be exact. Uh, 2019, 2020, 21 and 22. So he's looking to make it an unheard of five in a row, let alone five of those trophies in general. So that'd be an outstanding achievement, but I think he's got his, have his work cut out for him so far this weekend. Certainly with the field of the way they are at the moment, he's uh, got his hands full as we're focused in on here. Rod Listen from WA. In the number 71, he's in the Sabre 02. He's being chased by number 49 there, Damien Spinello, in the Acura Motorsports chase up. The interesting thing here, Steve, is that we're not even inside the top 10. And this is, mm. in fact, this is from 14th in the race back to about 25. So this, this battle pack has started to uh, add a few to it. They're catching it, the old one or two at the front, and some are sort of joining in from the back here. And this is absolutely typical Formula V racing. You touched on Maury Fordham before. Maury Fordham was the, you know, instrumental in bringing the first Formula V nationals here to Phillip Island 40 years ago, whatever it was. And uh, we've seen it from time to time. And it is just a massive lineup of Formula Vs. And you cannot fault this racing. It is so entertaining. And that is why we see seasoned veterans that just stay in Formula V. They just love this. Sort of Nick Jones has been around for a long, yeah, long, long time. Long time. And just loves to keep coming back for it. Heath Collins and Reef McCarthy. You know, Reef McCarthy is trying to prove his worth as a potentially a pro race car driver. But getting laps in a race car is what it's about. If you can keep the costs to a, a reasonable level, I'm not going to say cheap because there is just no such thing as. Even XLs can't say they're cheap racing anymore. No. There's just no, no such thing as. But uh, certainly keep it to a minimum level. Yes. And, uh, well, it's also how much commitment you want to give to it as well. And you can just go down and talk to any of this group that we're currently watching the front pack and talk to them about how much commitment they need and then they'll say yeah it's a high level of commitment it, it is. takes a lot of time a lot of money it's about going. what's affordable nowadays isn't Correct. it not so much about what's cheap but what's affordable and i sort of put and what's affordable to you and what's affordable to me and then the next guy <laughs> two exactly. different things aren't they if you're comparing apples and oranges or apples and apples even i think probably the two categories that are the most affordable in the grassroots motorsport nowadays are likely to be the formula v and probably the saloon cars to a degree they yes. seem to offer the best value for money uh, when it comes to racing you mentioned nick jones a few minutes ago he's actually joined the back of this group so this is a battle pack of 10 cars now um, he's sitting in ninth in the queue just ahead of andre curin in the, uh, the aussie boat sales entry but this is what i expected to see that you know sort of forming a, a group of 10 cars toward the back end of the race here's a replay of uh, someone going off oh loose nose cone there for uh, for number six that's one of the west australian cars uh, i believe going off at uh, down the circuit there so they might actually have a number change i think that's uh, not quite made it through to the grid sheet there it's going a yeah, little bit deep at uh, turn Mal four. In the Paul Maltoni, possibly. Yeah. It might be, yes, 906. I think that probably might be Paul's car there, just as uh, doesn't have the right car number on the There's front. There's a couple of cars sporting a bit of a blood nose there at the moment. I think that one we're looking at right there, look there. Is the, that the 51, 51? I think it is, yeah. It looks like the 51 uh, there of Alex McDonald. Yeah, he looks like he's got a blood nose. So there has been a bit of prize fighting going on out there at the moment, and uh, with Steve's touched on it, this is a national round, and we are closing right in on the end of the year. Lock up there, that's the uh, the 35 at Kinsella. So they're starting to feel the pressure. We're starting to come down towards that 
part of this race. There's probably three laps to go. You would probably suggest get this one around and plus one more. Yeah, probably two or three laps to go. I'd say all oh, big lock up 71. there for Rod Listen down in uh, the middle of the pack there in the light tech entry. And Malachi Windsor down the inside in the Sabre 01. Very, very different makes and models car there. Hey, I'll tell you what, Steve, we're not too far away from an open wheeler festival here this weekend. Mm. We've got the grassroots of Formula V. We've got the, uh, the stars of the future in Formula Ford. And we've got those that are trying to push onto an international career in Formula, Formula Open. Open. So a real, really big treat for those that like open wheeler racing. And uh, I'm tipping if you're at the track here today, you do like open wheeler racing because it's the enthusiasts that come to these sort of events. And if you are watching from anywhere around the country, we'd love to see you here track sides. You can get on a plane from Darwin and be in the races, be the races here tomorrow if you want, or just an easy uh, drive down the highway from Melbourne. Absolutely. Right, race leaders are starting to come across a little bit of lap traffic. I think that's Greg Johnston, 1200 entry. They've just rounded up on the front straight, but they've rounded him up without too much trouble. And this group of uh, seven or eight cars is going to be the next on the scene. Claudia Lennox done a fantastic job here. Not only was she the lead uh, lady in qualifying, uh, she's held her own in this group of uh, seven or eight cars, doing a fantastic job out in front. That's normally the car that Nick Jones has piloted for several years, the Jason 98. He's now moved on to the Sabre 02. Claudia's taken over that car instead of the Sabre 01 that she'd been driving for the last couple of seasons, doing a fantastic job in a very, very well-prepared car by Phil Chapman. Now it starts to get interesting. This will be the second last lap. This is what you want to sort of start figuring out where you want to position your car. Do you want to be at the lead of the queue? Do you want to be second in the queue and try and slingshot down to the start finish line? You just and want to be in the queue, don't you? You just want to be in the queue. You just want to be part of it. You want to be there or thereabouts <laughs> coming into the la coming to the last lap. And as I, I like it at this point in time, and I can only look around the room. There's only you and I in it, but both you and I have got grins from here to here at the moment. And this is what everyone watching Formula V racing, you take the time out of your day and you count it down to the last two laps, and this is where it really comes alive. Daniel Reynolds has stolen a little bit of a march here. He's got a nice little margin. It's not uh, insurmountable, but it's a little bit of a cushion. You just got to be careful because there is some lap traffic just ahead. Just trying to work out who that is. Uh, it might very well be, uh, it might be Franz Esterbauer potentially. I'm just out of the shot there. I'm not 100% sure if it is him or not. Need to get a bit more of a better look on the cameras just to see if it is indeed him. Well, what we don't want to see is this uh, car play any part in what's coming up behind mm. him. It's car 78. He's it? going to be caught down the front straight if that is the case. Whatever the car is actually pulling over to the left-hand side. Uh, I'll get a read on Last lap board goes out. It is car number 30 who is in the queue there. So it's actually Mark Moran from Queensland. Apologise to uh, to France. It's Mark Moran there, the car that's on the right-hand side of the uh, of the track there, letting the leaders go through, doing a really good job there, trying to stay out of the way of the much faster and more powerful uh, 1600cc uh, machinery. Daniel Reynolds done a magnificent job. He started out of seventh place, leading on this uh, last lap here. This is a dangerous position to be in in a Formula V. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Mm. But yet, let's see how this plays out. He led the last lap. He came across the line, and the last lap board came out. In fact, he led the last half a lap. Now it all starts to unfold in front of us. Now, there's national implications in here as they get through turn number four. Any one of these three drivers can win the Australian series. It's uh, Michael Kinsella, Reef McCarthy or Curtis Porter. They are the three that are mathematically in the hunt. Tyrone Wiseman was actually second in the running order, uh, but is not here this weekend. So it's down to those three gentlemen. There's maximum of 90 points on offer for the weekend and you drop your worst round. So they are the three mathematically in contention. They are all in this group. Curtis Porter right off the back though here. He's almost uh, He's almost eight. not in uh, in contention now. So swings back to those other two in the front of this one. And then you throw in Aretha McCarthy and Heath Collinson just to spoil your, uh, your race victories here at this point in time. Reynolds has done really well to hang on for a lap and a half here and set the fastest lap of the race on the penultimate lap. But they're coming to the chequered flag this time. He's got another little bit of a, an air cushion here as well. He might have done enough to pick up the win here in Speco VHT preliminary number one. He may be safe. The real question is what happens behind with the likes of Kinsella, McCarthy, Collinson and co. It's going to be Reynolds. He'll get the win here. Great drive in the last couple laps. McCarthy will get second. Collinson's going to get third ahead of Kinsella and McDonald. So that's a great finish to preliminary number one.
and in the end Curtis Porter down to ninth there so uh, boy that puts a real fire under the national championship have a look at this round Jake on Rowe. the last corner this is the battle pack yet yeah, just outside the 10. Will Jake Rowe get a couple of spots here because remember he had that really tardy start out of the third row of the grid he's tucked in here behind Darren Power is he going to pull out of the slingshot is he going to get him he's going to get it by a nose great judgment from the number 66 GR Motorsport Electrics driver what did that net him in the final finishing order I think that has netted him Waiting for the timing screens to actually update there. I'm wondering if that sort of netted him maybe a position just outside the top 10. That, if that's the case, that's a hell of a recovery drive. It is. It was a horrible start, and he saw the whole world disappear in front of him there. In fact, even the uh, the ambulance and the course car would have passed him as well. So uh, that's a really good... Uh, uh, it's those sort of races that make your racing career. You've had a, a big downfall, or you've had a, something that hasn't gone your way. Gather your thoughts, put it behind you, and just get on with the race. Pass as many cars as you can safely. Bring it home, because you've still got a whole weekend of racing still yeah. to go. And having said that, we see Formula Bs on track tomorrow at 11.20, and then again at 3.05. Just noticing as well that it looks like uh, Jake Bro may have actually been docked a lap. I'm not sure if he's been in the pits or if there's a timing issue there, but I'll wait to see what the, uh, the end result there is uh, when everything is said and done. Uh, whether or not he actually did come in the pits or whether he uh, had legitimately was uh, on the road there. We've, uh, we've skipped the top 10 there just for a little moment. We've gone to position 11, but uh, top 10 results. Daniel Reynolds, Reef McCarthy and Heath Collinson, the top three from Michael Kinsella and Alex McDonald. So the top three covered by five tenths of a second. So that's a really, really good start to proceedings here for Formula V. Lee Partridge and uh, David Kaisley, sixth and seventh. Andre Curran, Curtis Porter and Nick Jones, the, uh, the top 10. And there's the confirmation of just how close the top 10 was. 3.3 seconds, first to second. Top five there, just under half a second. So what a great start to the biggest field of the weekend in Formula V. Then it was quite a margin in the day from Nick Jones in 10th all the way back to Ash Clifford uh, and Brandon Taylor. Nearly 10 seconds there uh, to those two. And then that group, we were just highing off at the last minute there. Darren Power, Damon Spinello, uh, Malachi Windsor. Uh, Rod Lisson and Claudia Lennox. Claudia leading a good portion of that uh, little group there just up until the last couple of moments. Brock Hamilton started off the rear of the grid, 37th place. He made his way up to 21st, so that's an excellent drive for the uh, the driver who's only been in the car for three rounds now. Charlie Richardson there in 22nd. Ken Philby still coming to grips with uh, his Sabre 02 after two years of not driving that car. So he finishes in 23rd. Michael Westerhout there from Queensland 24th. And Cameron Pell, he started toward the rear as well and uh, some of the Victorian regulars there in Mick Fisher, Kelly Egan, Gavin Stubbs, Danny Chair over there from WA in 29th, and then the rest of the field after that. But it looks like everybody got home, importantly, so that means 37 cars back out on track tomorrow. And uh, look at those clouds, Darren. They do not look great, do they? Well, I tell you what, that's the last uh, race for the day, and there is some rain in that, and we've got an entire field of these magnificent Formula 3s, uh, Toyotas, Formula BMWs, etc., that are entering here for this one. Delara's Rolf RT4 there with Arthur Abrahams. Great to see that car out there. McGale's Reynard 92D. I'm not too sure that, that we've seen that. That's a Formula Holden, so I didn't see that one out there earlier today. So we'll see that. The TARDIS FT50, which was the Australian Formula 4 type of car. So it's, uh, as it suggests, Formula Open will be out on track next. Uh, let's have a quick break and catch our breath because it's not going to be too long before these cars are out on track. We're we'll back in a moment. You're live at trackside at Phillip Island Grand Prix Circuit for Isle of Magic 2023. Welcome back trackside here, ladies and gentlemen. And the headline reads, check out the radar because there is a massive cell heading straight for the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. I've got the screen open right in front of me. And I tell you what, that is a, uh, a very big cell of rain. And we are going to get this race started right on time. 
and we are going to try and get it done. 3.45, in fact, I reckon if we get the whole field round there, they might even get this race uh, on, on underway he, uh, as fast as they possibly can, the entire field making their way out onto track. I tell you what, that shot there is magnificent. Congratulations to the cameraman and indeed the guys in the van shows the drama of the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. All we need now is lightning to strike that tower and uh, it would be a very dramatic scene indeed. Please no. The fastest, the fastest cars here this weekend are about to head out on track and uh, entertain us. The uh, Formula 3s, the Formula uh, Formula Holtons, the Formula 4s and here is how they will roll out. Trent Grubel who is currently leading this series, will lead the field out. And in fact, Trent Grubel, a fiery young race driver, really does have the fire in his belly, loves to win the races. He comes into this round of the Australian Formula Open Series in, in the class AFO1. There's AFO1, AFO2 and AFO4. Different uh, types of cars leading Ryan Howe on 196 to 177. Ryan Astley is the next there on 96 points. Miles Bromley on 88. We go to Winston Van Leerhoven on uh, 80. Trent Shervington on 43. So the picture really does start to colour in around the Grubel versus Howe race. And uh, let me tell you, that is the front row of the grid. Trent Grubel qualified on a 127.94. Ryan Howe on 128.0. So we are so desperately close to each other on the, on the front row of the grid. Miles Bromley next in P3, Kyle Evans to Bo Russell. And uh, Bo Russell started out only age 17, born in Ballarat, started racing karts at age seven and uh, was carter of the year at nine years old, has been in the FIA Academy of Karting. And uh, his first car race was in Formula 3 at the Shannon Speed Series at uh, Sandown earlier on this year. So a big welcome there to Bo Russell starting out of position number five. Ryan Astley, then Ryan McMillan, Christos Slurzak, Andrew Roberts, Rodney Baker, Douglas Barry, Paul DiBiazzi, Thomas Gallagher, Hanai Huang. Then we've got Mark Wilson, Lawrence Katsadis, Nathan Beer and Shane Morrow. Some of the big news with this category earlier on in the year was the fact that the cars all went on to the GT tyre and they've been very, very happy indeed with the move to this tyre. And uh, in fact, they've announced a calendar for next year as well. So uh, looking forward to further involvement for GT, but everyone has been very, very happy with the pace that they've been able to get out of the GT tyre. And of course, uh, I guess the word is endurance, not really endurance, but durability out of the GT tyre. And they've all been uh, glowing reports for uh, the GT tyre. and we. We look forward to seeing it take a lot further part in uh, in this series. So all the cars shod with those tyres and happy to be doing so as they take up their spot on the grid. A fantastic category. I just love these uh, this pure European wings and slicks type of racing. Steve, I, I notice you getting a good look at the uh, the booth window as well. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at the uh, the front two there as well. All the different makes and models of the machinery, but you're right. It uh, harks back to all those at the era of uh, European open single open wheel single seater racing. I'm just talking everything about the tyres and what happened last year in the last race where uh, there was one or two d uh, drivers that gambled on the wet tyres. They were the ones and uh, that were OK. And then everyone started slipping off uh, on the formation lap. But no such worries this time around as we get underway for the first race for Formula Open. The 22 doesn't get away nicely there. That's Bo Russell, the young fella. He needs to get back down, concentrate and get up through the gearbox. Stay with it. Keep it with him here. But it is down into turn one this time. It is going to be Ryan Howe. He wears the 27. That is the Casey Stoner Alan Jones World Championship number. Will that carry the weight that he needs it to? Nicely situated on cold tyres. The Jitty tyres hanging on beautifully around through turn number two there. The 27 leading the race down. Trent Grubel in P2. The car that they used at the Melbourne Grand Prix to show down there as well, to show what these cars can look like down the inside, around the outside. He looks sorry about that, but uh, getting on with it. Bromley then Evans. Looks like Bo Russell's gathered it all back up there as well. So bad start, but getting back underway through the first stanza of corners here. But Ryan Howe getting the power down, drives Mercedes for a living, teaching people how to drive the AMG product. Well, at the moment, he's just teaching a couple of drivers behind him how to drive these cars. Miles Bromley right round the outside goes Miles. 
Now, mm -hmm. Ryan Astley, Ryan's had a terrific start. Started out of sixth into fourth, and now uh, just starting to swap that round between the nine and the 99. So that is Miles Bromley in the nine and Ryan Astley in the 99. Great move around the outside of Lukey Heights. Very, very brave to go for that on the opening lap. Ties still coming up to temperature if you haven't had a chance to get them into the operating window on the formation lap. And the stewards have been requesting that drivers get around and do the formation laps as briskly as possible to maximise the amount of laps that you do in the time that you are allocated on track for. So if you haven't got them in the right window, they're still coming up to temperature now. So that was a very, very gutsy move. And great gutsy move from Ryan Howe to hold his nerve going into turn four on the opening lap because Grubel was threatening on the outside and he stuck with it and managed to come out of Siberia with the lead and still holds it right now. Race commentators can be accused of uh, talking up things that may or may not happen, but this rain cell, which is orange on the bomb radar at the moment, is just off cows, which is only a matter of what two kilometres away as the flow the crow flies to get to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. We've got 11 and a half minutes remaining in this event. Let's hope it takes 12 minutes for that rain to get yeah, to the that, Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Actually, probably a bit longer than that to make sure the cars can all get off the circuit after the checkered flag drops without having to spin off anywhere as we're looking further down the field. Back to the lead of the race, actually. Grubel threatening again, left, right. Going to go the long way. Is he going to do the same move that, uh, that Ashley did a couple of uh, mid seconds ago? Not this time. Howe's got it covered in the 27. Straight down the middle of the track. Defensive line into MG corner. Ryan Howe, of course, in the Delara. The guy behind him in the Delara. There are a couple of different series of Delaras. The F308-11 upgrade and Trent Google in the latest of the F3 Delaras. The F3312, so the 2012 version. And have a look at that. There is a big jag to the left-hand side of the track with uh, Ryan Howe trying to flick Trent Grubel off here. The, the difference with the Grubel car is it does have a bit more aerodynamic efficiency. So that's what we're starting to see. We're starting to see as they swap around now, the 9 and the 99 going for it again there. And weighing in on the back there is that uh, Evans. Yep, that is Evans. Kyle Evans in the number one machine. Tucked in here behind, what's that, the number nine of uh, Miles Bromley of Queensland. And then ahead of them, the number nine, uh, so the 99 machine of Ryan Astley. So that's a good little group there. Yeah, and this is a ripping battle here. In fact, it's going on right back through to position number six in this race. And that's uh, the Bo Russell entry, the one, the, uh, the newcomer into the game, 17 years of age. Is there a lapped car in between these two? I didn't realise the blue car that was in between the leaders and uh, and that next group of three. And it's, uh, I'm not sure if someone's been off the circuit there or if that's a, a timing error. Back. This is the 56. This is the uh, the Formula Holden of Douglas Barry. And we can physically see the size difference. Have a look at that there. All these magnificent Formula Holdens. And i got to say, I look back in my, my love of open wheeler racing and it is the Formula Holden era in the, the Reynard dominated era, the 91, 92, 94 Ds, and they were just magnificent cars, beautiful sounding race cars, and fast. Yeah, Very, oh, big lock up there, not sure Ooh. who that was, just disappearing off screen. One of our front runners, so that's 12, and no, sorry, in the 56, so that's the 12 and the 56, so it'd be about Roberts or Slurzak through the back, here it is here, this was the one that yeah, had the lock up. It might have been the white car number just two. behind Sluzak in the, uh, in, the, in the number 93, I think was the one that had the lock up going down the hill. Andrew Roberts, or was it Christian Sluzak? Yeah. Oh, oh this oh. battle here, the nine, the 99, they're getting very much tangled up in the one. There wasn't much room there when the second car of the two went through there. That was, was that the, uh, the, the, uh, the 99 there? Went through into fourth place and uh, it was almost tire to tire contact heading through the second part of uh, Southern Loop there. Now down the inside, that's uh, it's a, the 22, sorry, not the 99, the 22 of uh, Bo Russell, uh, making up two positions in about three quarters. Yeah, this is a great lively race here. This is uh, four, five, six on the road. The next thing you know, we'll have McMillan along board there in the 21, Ryan McMillan, qualified at a 132.46 and uh, doing a tremendous job. Wow, this is uh, some good open wheeler racing. This is what we like to see. Very, very close passing going on. Ryan Howe is now leading this race by three quarters of a second over Trent Grubel. And this is what he needs to do. Ryan Howe needs to start to, in this weekend, needs to start to draw those um, points right back because, as I said, Trent Grubel comes into this round on 196 and Ryan Howe on 177. 
and we are going to need to catch these uh, point score overnight. There's that 56 again. The uh, Douglas Barry entry, the 91D, uh, sorry, 92D. Reynard, what a beautiful racing car. In fact, it's coming onto the straight now. Let's just have a listen to that Holden V6. It was a flat sound, and boy, it drone coming down the straight now. There it goes. Nice little sound there. Looks like we're going to go back into the, the history books. There has been a couple of Reynard uh, pilots that have taken out the uh, the John Roxburgh Trophy or the Victorian Road Racing Championship over the years. We've got to go all the way back to the last one, which is 1994. David Bruce was the last of those in a, a Reynard 893. So it's been a long, long time since we've seen uh, those sorts of cars gracing the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. And great to see they found a home here in Formula Open. It is certainly, it is good, but you also see them now, they're starting to come into the historic events and uh, they're, they're just absolutely magnificent. They put them in with, you know, the likes of Formula 5000, so whatever has taken your uh, fancy over the eras of Australian open wheeler racing, um, we get to see it. This is back at the lead. This is very, very important. This is uh, points gathered by uh, these guys in the All Properties Group, Formula Open Australia, and uh, Australian Formula Open, and they are doing a tremendous job. Timmy Macro, and uh, just quietly in the background, Phil Chester breathed some life into this category during COVID. And uh, it has been greeted with open arms. Numerous different uh, types of chassis are available. Like even in this race, we have got Delara's, Miguel's. We've got uh, Rolt RT4 of Arthur Abraham's. In fact, I don't think Arthur's made it on track. It was an entry, but hasn't made it out on track. Uh, Miguel, as I mentioned, Reynard, Tardis as well, the FT50 Formula Toyota 50 there as well with Christian Slozak and uh, Paul Biazzi. And those guys are uh, doing a tremendous job. The 127 of Paul Biazzi is currently in 12th place. Lap traffic here, Nathan Beer in the number 51. So that's, an F, that's two F3s overtaking an F4, which had, a, a, I guess, a maligned few years in Australian motorsport, slowly coming back. And the relevance is still there for Formula 4. Um, I guess in the fullness of time, handled badly, handled poorly, whatever it was. But uh, um, Australian Formula Open has been a good place for these cars to, I guess, find their spot again. If we just look at two Dallara's battling it out out front. I did That's see a, Ryan Howe and Trent Group. I did see a Formula 4 uh, post go up from the Acura Motorsport stable in Formula V, who we just saw uh, a little while ago earlier in the in the month. Oh, and uh, wondering if they're looking for a driver. In the two, a big lock up there. That was Andrew Roberts. Now we're talking down in position number eight. Sorry about that, yeah, Steve. Yeah. But that is a torturous move there. These jitty tyres have been lauded as something pretty fantastic, but you cannot... You cannot lock one up and slide for 35 metres into the corner. You're just going to uh, give yourself a 50 cent piece. Oh, and, oh and another one again. This car's got balance issues. That's that what, is for sure. That's what happens though, isn't it? Once you torch it once, as soon as you go for the brakes again, it's always inevitably going to find that part of the tyre once again. It's going to make it even worse. It's like a 50 cent piece. You well, can't roll it like a 20 cent piece. Yeah, exactly. It's gone from a 5 cent piece to a 10 cent piece to a 50 cent piece now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Have a look at this, coming onto the straight now. There's the power of the Formula Holden. Draws up alongside the two Formula 3s. Three and a half litre, or 3.6 litre versus two litre. And uh, it is out there, and they are amongst it. The initial rule set for Formula Open was AF01, which is for the Formula 3 cars. These Dallaras we're seeing leading the way. Then the, uh, the next set of, uh, of rules that came along were for the uh, AF02 which is in construction, um, same, same carbon tubs, but uh, for the Toyota Racing Series, Formula BMW, Formula Renault, Formula Ford 2000, which is a space frame type chassis. And then AF03, Invitational class, for any of those there, that's where your Formula Holden Reynard would drop in. And of course, AF04 is for the dedicated Formula 4 racing class generation cars, 2015, the Megal, the Tardis that ran in that field. So that's the history of uh, where these cars, our leaders across the line now, three minutes remain, have a look at this, Trent Goobel strikes, he strikes hard in the 74, the 27 stays strong on the inside, Ryan Howe, that is the more modern car, just getting through the air more efficiently, that is what we were seeing, I touched on it early on in this race here, that is the difference between these two Delaras, the more modern version of the car, and we're seeing 
the, uh, the 74 there at Grubel there. Delara F312 over Ryan Howe in the F308. Two different, I guess, generations of world FIA Formula 3 type specification of racing cars. And we just saw it right there, live at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. More aero efficient. Yep, Grubel finally through. What an effort by Ryan Howe in the older machinery to hold off Grubel for as long as he did. Better part of seven and a half laps and uh, getting just within three minutes of the finish of this race, unfortunately not able to hold on. Grubel had set the fastest lap of the race about two uh, or three laps ago, so he was pressing, he was looking, and unfortunately for Howe, finally. Uh, Grubel was able to get through. I also noticed a few seconds ago there was a couple of spots of, uh, of rain just on the camera lens at turn number 12. So we're racing the weather here. It's not too far away. It is closing. It's getting awfully darker every passing minute at the moment. We are racing, trying to get to the finish here before the heavens open. There's a little spot there just in the, uh, in the foreground shot on that camera as another tyre gets torched and it's now starting to hit the commentary box window. So there's going to be plenty of temperature in the tyres. You can see right now, if you look hard enough at the tyres, you can see there's little bits of spray just starting to emerge from the, the jitty slick rubber on these cars as the leaders are working their way now through the back markers. There's been a change here as well. How's gone back through on Grubel? And swapping again now. They've got traffic. Grubel's going to go on the uh, inside. Howe's been pushed wide. It's slippery, people. Grubel's been caught up amongst that. He's not happy about it either. That's a couple of F4 cars there as well. Ryan Howe deals with the rain. He deals with the traffic. And Trent Grubel in car number 74 has to dispatch with the AFO4 entry there and just get back on with this race. 57 seconds remain in this lap in this journey. Championship changing stuff here. Ryan Howe has the lead, the biggest lead he's had over this entire race as they come up through hay sheds now. Will the rain hit the track any harder? It's certainly hitting our commentary booth window and we are right smack bang in the middle of the main straight here. The rest of the track looks to be a bit okay at the moment. It's not we're not seeing sheets of rain coming across the track. Just these dramatic little bursts, these little showers around the place. There's enough temperature in the track. There's enough temperature in the tyres for these cars to get another lap out. I'm just watching the officials at the main straight at the moment. They have got control of that last lap board. We're going to go again. Two to go. We're going to go again. There is two to go here. So, Howe leads this lap. Grubel, the car that was the fastest on the track last time round, at 29.0, he's been the fastest on the track. He lost three seconds in traffic in that last lap around, and that is exactly the gap that is between these two drivers. Boy, you couldn't have written this any better, Timmy Macro. You have got this AF1. Oh, series absolutely delivering. We saw it, I saw it earlier on this year at the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia Series at the Bend. It was immense. It was these two, plus a couple of others that were weighing in on it. Each time we get a little bit further into this championship, the 27 and the 74 become more and more the main protagonists to keep an eye on. At this round, the last round, it is exactly what is going on with these giddy shot race cars. And they have absolutely turned up the pressure and given us an entertainment package to take into their last day of their series tomorrow, Steve. Absolutely. I'm still in awe of the gutsy call that Ryan Howe made to go to the outside of, of the exit of turn two to clear the lap traffic and sort of you know, use the lap traffic as a pick to block Drink Grubel in. He did had no choice him? but to lift. Did you see him reach into his fob pocket, pick out a 20 cent piece, toss the corner, <laughs> go, which way will I go? Heads or tails? Pretty that's much. what it was. That was, it was Trent Grubel and Ryan Howe, one went right, one went left. It was like, he went that way and I, I went, went that, that way. way. That's that's right. Last lap board out. So one more tour of the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. So it'll be 11 laps the duration for the leaders here in the first of the Formula Open races for Phillip Island's Island Magic 2023. What an end to day one. <laughs> what an end to day one. And the weather just comes weighing in on it. The drama points wise, the drama on track. And then the weather just throws it up as well. And we've got race car drivers getting our 50 cent pieces, calling a uh, heads or tails as to whether they go left or right. Look at Trent Grubel. Not he has up. lit it up this last lap around. He has gathered up one second on Ryan Howe. In fact, it's now down to one second. So the drama again, there they are physically on the road, the 27 and the 74. They're going to have half a lap to go in this one. Ryan Howe knows exactly what that car behind him is, that, that darker burgundy red 
in his mirrors. His car's about uh, one third that colour as well. They've both gone for a fairly similar top airbox type of cover. But uh, coming around the top part of the track here, does Trent Grubel just give it the big send in about 100 metres time? Or does he hang on and fight for tomorrow? Not far back. He's too far back, oh, sorry. Tell you what, he's he thought about it, out. but he was too far back. So the last opportunity he's going to have is to out-drag Ryan Howe down the front straight. So he's got to get a good run here out of turn 11. He's got to be a bit closer than this. I think Howe might just be safe. There is some lap traffic in play. Is it going to cause any trouble? They had to go a little bit wider than the optimal line at the final corner, but Howe will be safe. He'll greet the chequered flag first after a monumental struggle with Trent Grubel for line honours. So it swung the way of Howe. How he defended very, very well, went back to Grubel, and then he managed to mow that margin down, but didn't quite get close enough. Just ran out of time and ran out of laps. Wow, I tell you what, this is why open wheeler racing is what it is. That just turned it on, and we just turned it on right throughout that field. We saw a great battle there, and it still goes on, in fact. Here we're just giving a look down now at uh, Wang down there in the number six, 16 and the 51 of Beer. But also in that uh, Astley, McMillan, Barry, Roberts, Baker, Slurzak, Tibiazzi, they all had their battles amongst that as well. It just happened to be the drama with the rain, the drama with the traffic, and we were watching Ryan Howe and Trent Google, both those guys doing a tremendous job out in front, really weighing up risk versus reward as we see uh, these two coming around. And FT21, uh, sorry, this is um, a Formula 4, oh, and, a, uh, and a Formula Brabham Holden, whatever it might be called, or an F4000, whatever trim it's running in, the uh, 92D. There you go to the line, so that was McMillan and Barry, 7th and 8th on the road. And then the last car that we're waiting to cross on the lead lap is the number 2 of Roberts uh, in 9th and uh, the number 12 of Baker in 10th. So that rounds out uh, the top 10 there. And it rounds out our action here at the first day of Island Magic 2023. So there's confirmation of your finishing results. Ryan Howe by a little under half a second from Trent Grubel in a great exchange over 11 laps. Miles Bromley and Bo Russell, good start uh, to proceedings for Bo Russell up a spot there. Kyle Evans in fifth, Ryan Astley and Ryan McMillan. Douglas Barry in the 56, followed by Roberts and Baker. And then the balance of the Formula Open field there, Chris Slurzak. DBRC, Gallagher, Wilson, Huang, who we saw just in the last closing minutes of that lap, and Lawrence Katsidis, Nathan Beer, and Morrow, the only non-finisher after just three laps. Geez, I tell you what, Steve, uh, it doesn't matter what happens in the lead up to Island Magic, it, it is, as the name suggests, it's just coming to Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit and magic happens, doesn't it? Just some magnificent racing we've seen across the categories. We haven't seen a red flag, we haven't seen a safety car, Fantastic racing. I don't guarantee that will happen tomorrow no, because, we can't. you know, it's schoolies for the racing set and they all want to take the big trophies home. And the big trophies are as relevant as they have been forever. The big one, the 50k plate for the sports sedans is always massive. The Endeavour Cup is for the 944s. Then we have all those others, the, the Victorian Road Racing Championship, which we're just seeing the cars heading off now as well. The Matty Flinders plate, just steeped in awesome history. The Victorian Historic tourist trophy uh victorian tourist trophy there as well and of course the Mori fordham trophy there for the uh, formula b's and the phillip island formula ford trophy will all be decided here at the phillip island grand prix circuit live and trackside if you've been watching the blendline tv coverage thanks for joining us they do a fantastic job sending the pictures out to entertain everyone all over the world It'd be great to see you trackside here at the phillip island grand prix circuit tomorrow there is some good weather and this rain that we've been talking about is skirting around us from where we can see and we're in a great spot to see it uh -huh. from let's face it uh it is skirting right around the uh the edge of the racetrack here so um thank you for those that have joined us here trackside steve thank you for your time here in the commentary booth it's been great to have you and of course callum brannigan graced us with his presence and a great call there on the formula fords we'll see you trackside tomorrow morning the first race will be 944s sports sedans improved production formula ford formula open formula v and historic touring cars and we'll do it all over again in the afternoon i've been darren smith have a great night